All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club Stop and Chat today. Oh, we have a very special, special, special returning guest. Mr. Mikey Taylor <laughs> is back with us. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> welcome back, dude. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Definitely. What's going down, man? Ugh, life. Listen, the last time we talked to you, it was, uh, it, was a, it was over Zoom. Oh, yeah. You guys were pressing me on my new office that was empty. Remember? Yeah, uh, how's oh, it going yeah. now? Is it full? Or st- it's full. Okay. Yep, it's full. Cool. Uh, cool. I'm now out of the home office into the real office again. So okay. that's, that's nice. right. You are in your home office. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. So the office is full. That's a good sign. Yeah. The house is full. The house is full. <laughs> <laughs> Got the, the seriously the real life Brady bunch over here. Ah, we do. No, yeah. No We're scaling. It's a, <laughs> you're scaling. <laughs> I love that everything, even in his family life, turns it's into scalable. a business yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how's it, how's it going, man? Listen, full-time, you know, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to call you. I, you know, I have a hard time telling, yeah, I, when I introduce myself to people, I Well, I you should say you're like a business uh, TikToker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you do a lot of that. You do a lot of that. That's coming, with the, that's coming with the territory, right? Right. right? It's, yeah, it's a part of it. Yeah. And I, I think it. we talked about it in the last time you were here. But I like, just started using it. Last okay. Time. No. Okay. Well, you were doing a lot of Instagram stuff. Mm-hmm. So basically, same thing. I mean, TikTok is definitely it's like surpassing YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff like this. It's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. But I think we talked about it though, is because you went from like skateboarding. You have a fa- fan base for skateboarding, right? <laughs> How have you seen right. this? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We were talking about how difficult it was taking an audience that liked me as a skateboarder, yeah. right. shifting it to the next, the backlash. That's what the conversation was. It was a lot of that. But oh, listen, right. it's been maybe, you know, it's Five been quite years. a while. Yeah. Right. So how is that going? What have you seen? Um, what have you felt mm. by that? You know, because I'm sure, listen. Good question. We're all skateboarders, right? You're going to be a skateboarder for the rest of your life. Yep. We live, breathe, drink, bleed it. That's right. So I'm sure anytime something happens with that, it it affects you in a certain yeah. way, you yeah. know? Yeah. You don't want to lose that. Well, I, so there's, I think there's a couple things to it, right? One, bringing up TikTok. TikTok was actually the game changer for me Seriously? so far. Yeah. Because it was the first platform that I was able to build not as the skater. Oh, okay. yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I was able to start from scratch. So... Uh, you know, it's all financial focused. I have, I don't know, 500,000 followers Ooh, on it, right? Okay. Wow. And they're not skaters. Right. So every once in a while, I'll post a clip and the comment, like somebody will leave a comment. They'll go, does anyone here know that this dude used to be a pro skateboarder? And right, everyone's like, right. what? No way. Right. <laughs> then you, you know, compare <laughs> that to Instagram and it's shut the f up. Right? <laughs> 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 so it, it, that part's different. But what, what I'll say from Instagram, this is kind of what I'm realizing. Uh, I still have the fall off. I think that okay. will be here probably forever, right. right? There's a group that have kind of gone through the first two years of, in my perspective, the questioning it. Like, mm. what is this dude talking about? Is this for real? Is right. this just a new... And then I was able to get past that. I like, go, okay, shit, maybe this is for real. I'll, I'll keep listening. Okay. So then I have a, like a group of skaters now that are like, dude, I'm stoked you're talking about money. Like, I don't know what this is. Uh, you have another group that I think is still waiting for me to stop talking about money and get back to skating. Get back to skating. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's a, it's a hodgepodge, man. It's a, it's a That's bunch of different funny. people. I could imagine. Well, keep doing what you're doing because I think it's rad. Thank I you. think yes. that any Definitely. type of information that you could provide to somebody, mm-hmm. even if they use it or not, you know, it's still information. You could still retain that. Maybe they'll use it later in life. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, and I think like even if even if it's a piece that creates a thought, for you to go, damn, I never thought of it that way. And then to like create some type of interest to then go learn outside of what I'm doing, I think that's a huge win, mm, right? Yeah, sure. But something you <laughs> something you said about, you know, how does it feel to get, you know, shut the F up, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? What I've noticed is it's a lot easier, easier for me to take criticism doing this than it was when I was skating. Oh, criticism yeah. in what you're doing or just because what, you're trans you're, no you're uh, this is what i mean skating for me felt very personal it was mm. like this is the way i skate and express and you, yourself and, that's right yeah. and you are judging the way i do tricks right yeah. it, it was hard for me to take criticism sure. there with this it's not that hard because if you're criticizing what i'm saying it's just a different view of an actual topic that 
really has nothing to do with me, right? right. Like yeah, 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 we're right. we're talking about like, you know, it's apartment buildings better than storage units. Very easy for you to say, dude, you're a moron. Why do you think that way? Oh, well, this is why. Here's my thoughts. Here's their thoughts. It's a easier conversation. Gotcha. Right? I, I noticed on your Instagram. I think it's mostly your Instagram or you. TikTok. No, it's Instagram. Okay. Uh, TikTok. You'll, you'll, you're, you're, you'll, you'll snap back at people, dude. And I love seeing that. I yeah. love seeing, because at skateboarding, people don't really do that too often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's I, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think, too, like what, what I get more than anything isn't that what I'm saying is wrong. It's that I shouldn't be saying what I'm saying. Right. Right. I get that more than anything. You shouldn't be saying this. You're just a skater. Okay. You shouldn't be talking about money. You're not a financial planner, right? So more than anything, my response is always, dude, please just argue the point because I'm either saying truth or I'm not. That's that's the only option. Yeah. Yeah. But when like you're coming at me from like a place of you're not allowed to be saying that, then we can't even have a conversation. Yeah. That's true. You know? That's true, right. And what do they know what you don't? What, what, what do they know what, that you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're... Yeah. Yeah. You're in that world. Yeah. As Who, far as your success, too. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> just shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. really, yeah. like, you don't know what's going on. I'm telling you certain things and I'm asking questions. Yeah. And, you know. I mean, if you were saying all this and you didn't have anything to back it up, then I'd be like, okay, why is he saying yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. that yeah. would be weird. a joke. Yeah. 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 Like, just play, guys. Just, <laughs> this last five years, I was just messing with you. And yeah. Back to doing trade flows. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's like me. If I started doing financial stuff, yeah. listen, I. I uh, well, you make a decent living, but I have no, by any means, no right to talk about financial success. Right. You know, because I haven't experienced that. Yeah. Well, I, I hear what you're it. saying. I hear working what you're saying. On it, you know but what? Yeah, but but not, you know what? There. You know what I'm seeing a lot of people doing, which mm. I think is cool. It's not just in finance. It's with everything. But they'll start basically moving into trying to figure something out. Let's mm -hmm. just use finance for sure, the sure. for the topic. And then they'll kind of create content around, hey, guys, I'm trying to figure this out. You want to take ah. this journey with me? This is what I learned today. And it's almost this like walk with them instead of this, this is how it is type sure. of uh, yeah. relationship. Sure. Yeah. And dude, I think you're seeing that resonate more than, you know, somebody just saying this is what this is. Totally. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. You know, so yeah. if you want to ever but, go down that path, man, like this is business. This is how I do a podcast. Like, let's figure this out. But also right. you got to, you got to look at it in two ways too, right? There's a, there's a way that you could do it that is not actually telling people what, what's going on. Yeah. Like you're not telling them like absolutes unless you're mm -hmm. completely sure about that. But mm -hmm. there's also the entertainment factor too. You know, you, you know, that, uh, that guy on YouTube, Graham. Yeah. Stefan. Graham. So, right. He's yeah. entertaining. Yeah. He right. Is. He's a smart dude. He does all these stuff, but his YouTube videos are entertaining. I'll watch them sometimes, yeah. you know, to get a, so there is, Two sides to that, I think. Yeah. It's the entertainment and information. That's right. You know, because a lot of people that are watching those videos probably aren't taking his advice or doing what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. But it's fun to watch. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. I think content. At, uh, maybe there's more than two ways to look at content, but couldn't you argue that it's either entertainment or education? That's the only two reasons to follow somebody. Sure. And if you can blend the two, then you're Whoa. probably a rock star, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That work for That's sure. the truth. That's the truth. So what is going on, bro? Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk, Mikey Taylor. All right. You know. What do you want to hear? What's your day to day? You know. The kids want to know when was the last time you skated. Oh, uh, actually, I skated. Uh, I went to P Rod's Park last week. Ah, uh -huh. how was it? it? Have you been there? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's unreal. So, yeah, it's, so it's unreal. It's like First a thing, state of the art fucking skate park. It's unbelievable. Really have you been there is. yet? Yeah, it went it last is week. Unbelievable. Well. I was like, dude, why didn't you do this when we were kids when you used to complain <laughs> about your uneven ground with uh, 20 layers of paint on it? I'm like, yeah. dude, this. Yeah. <laughs> Even me and my craziness who used to love to complain, I can't complain about this. This is yeah. like perfect. It's perfect. Really perfect. Is. Yeah. The it's ground perfect. is so good. Oh, you it got really, the LED yeah. lights. You could change the oh, mood in there. It's like, insane. It's beautiful. He goes, he goes, dude, like, I'm just saying there's like insane Wi-Fi. I got this whole lounge. If you want to just come work here, then maybe you could skate with me for a little bit, I'm like, dude. <laughs> You're maybe I can come back, dude. Yeah, maybe I <laughs> a little recovery zone in the back. Dude, it's unbelievable Bro, with a cryo I, and workouts. Yeah, oh God, psycho. <laughs> P Rod is the he's that guy. He is. He really is. He is. Um, so my day to day. Uh, well, wait, let me ask you a question. Was uh, there anybody skating there? No. Oh, you were solo. Yeah. Well, I wasn't solo. Every every month, the first Thursday of every month, mm -hmm. uh, me, Malto, P Rod, Drama, and Atlas get together. Okay. And we smoke a cigar. Sure. And we talk about business yeah. and life. It's like a, 
I don't know what you want to call that. Uh, well, homie speak well, therapy, yeah. team building, team building, yeah. Team building yeah. exercise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we do that every Thursday, uh, every first Thursday of the month, and then we did it at Paul's Park. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you find a different location each time. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because what we were saying, like when Jerron went there, you were saying, or wait, was, was it you or somebody else? Wait, that was like there were so many. Oh, no, it was fucking. Dan- it was Daniel Scales' birthday, and I didn't know that they were just inviting everybody, oh, and it was a star-studded okay. event. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like all these people, and you probably know them too. I mean. Yeah. But just Shane and all these, I mean, um, you know, Carlos Cerbeto and I mean, are you? No, if I went during that, I would, would just watch, probably. I was going to say. Yeah. And <laughs> look, this could be insecurity talking, totally. but like, I don't skate enough to want to skate the way I feel comfortable with the public watching. Yeah. Right. If no one knew who I was and I was never like a pro skateboarder, then I went go skate. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like, dude, everyone's like, dude, look at this dude. And you're like, can't even freaking do anything anymore. It's just, Did you see Maggie Taylor here the other day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy you know? crooked grind. And I, I, got there, I got there a little early, so I feel you on that. Uh, but I was like, at least I got to kind of warm up before yeah. everybody got there. Because oh, yeah. if I would have just walked into this shit, I would have been like, damn, bro. I, would, I wish you would have told me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 You're like trying to back till the ledge. It like, yeah. takes you like 20 right. tries. You're like, wow, this guy really fell off. You're like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but even though that's not their conversation, that's in your head. It's in your own head. It's all, yeah, it's always we're our own. Own, own worst enemy. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, I didn't have to worry about that. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect, yeah. 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 perfect. Yeah, and so then my daughter is just now starting to want to mess around on a skateboard. Oh, beautiful. Oh, so how old? How old? She's nine. Oh, okay. so that uh, you know, she's like, take me to the skate park, and she did a little skate camp, and so oh, that cool. could be the thing that yeah. gets skating back into like a, at least a routine Ooh, of mine. That's cool. But it's not a routine. I mean, I see you, you know, you and Guy taking the kids at like. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. If I get to that point, maybe. Yeah. You know, well, my kid's not really taken to it just yet. He's like, you know, dabbling. Yeah, I, th- I don't think he's like around friends that are doing. It. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. You yeah. know how like, friends and that session you, you guys did out front. That was a funny shit. Oh, that that looked fun. That it looked was, really fun. It was great. definitely. Yeah, got a lot of love for that. I do. What well, looked, fun. It it looked, looked fun? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like ideal dad moment. <laughs> It was. That was definitely a real dad moment. <laughs> uh, so day to day, you wake up. Uh, I assume you get on the phone. You still go sort through emails. Maybe make some breakfast. Well, uh, yes. I try not to. I try not to start. I try not to start the workday till nine. Is what I try what, to do. When, when are you waking up? Seven? Six? Uh, yeah, between six okay. and seven. Okay. Um, and we have a little guy, so like he's up early. So my morning is I let Jen sleep. Mm. Uh, I wake up with him. I make him breakfast. Uh, we have a little hang, which is really him just jumping around and <laughs> trying to follow. <laughs> um, you know, um, and then I do uh, I do like a devotional every morning, trying to get like me in the the zone of being appreciative and you okay. know figuring out my purpose for the day, etc. And then the workday typically starts at nine. Um, we have calls throughout the week, and there's a few scheduled calls. Uh, thir- sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday all start at 9. Mm. So if I can get into the office by 9, I'll start it there. If I can, I'll do the first one from my sure. office room. Got you. Got yeah. you. How far is the office? It's close. 10, 10 minutes? Oh, eight minutes. good. Oh, we're in the – I mean, you don't know my area very well, but mm-hmm. we're in the old K-Swiss building. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, oh. K-Swiss headquarters used to be in Westlake. Okay. Yeah, so we're in their building. Wow. And we just moved in. We sold our office over summer. And just moved into a new space. So we're like, it's temp space. We're building out a whole kind of office right now. Oh, small and team in there right now? I'm sorry. No, please. Uh, in the temp space, uh, there's about, gosh, nine of us in there Okay. or so. Mm. Sick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, is this just for your business? Mm. Oh, okay. K-Swiss. Well, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm picturing a huge, I'm picturing a huge four block building. Hang on, hang on, open the door right It's a, it's a, it's a big building. Okay. Uh, we, our, our last building we sold, so we owner occupied. Uh, we put the gains that we made from that into apartments, not back into office, and now we're leasing space out of the old K-Swiss building. Okay. So we're occupying just under 9,000 feet. Ah, okay. Got you. For us. Got you. So there's okay. other people in the office. Okay. Ah, wow. shared. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. We thought you acquired the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Can> you imagine. <laughs> I mean, Guys. listen, I, in my mind, I'm uh, like, God damn, yeah. this dude just bought a full 20 yeah. story building. Yeah, not All, yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. There you go. I like that. Not yet. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So, but th- that's pretty much my consistent. It's pretty much Monday through Friday mm-hmm. at the office. Mm-hmm. What we were talking about earlier is I'm starting to do, you know, 
more speaking engagements where I'm traveling. If we're going to look at properties, most of our properties aren't by us, so there's travel involved with that. Gotcha. Uh, when we're doing capital raises that aren't done digitally, uh, I might be kind of dra driving around more than being in the office, but because everything's digital right now, most of that's been done at the office as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, are you still uh, doing the Zoom thing? Are you still doing the Zoom meeting? Yeah. There's a part of me that, that, that's over it completely. I'm, I'll just jump on it with my phone because I don't want to sit there and sit with my camera and do yeah. all that stuff. Look, like, I'm if a, we have a conversation, just call me. Yeah. I feel you. I totally yeah. feel you. I don't like the Zoom stuff. I've never liked it, but I'm a people person. I want to be in front of people. I even mm -hmm. told you the last time. I was like, okay, guys, I understand. We're like a month into COVID, but like, I want to see you guys. Let yeah, me know yeah, when we yeah, can yeah. do this. For you sure, know? for sure. So, it, like, I have, like, I get fired up when I'm around people. Like, yeah. if I get to go spend the day with dubs, there's a new energy that's coming out as opposed to me talking to them on the phone, right? Oh, totally. And so, like, when we're out raising capital, I, at least from a metric standpoint, mm -hmm. I'm going to do better when I'm in front of somebody. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, like sure. yeah. that wasn't an option, but it's starting to be. Uh, but what we're kind of dealing with now, we have a lot of people coming in digitally, right? Mm. They'll see my TikTok, they'll mm -hmm. see my Instagram, they'll make their way onto our website, they'll schedule a call. And so a lot of our investors coming in are leads. I don't even know them. Right. That's pretty so, great. So Zoom has been uh, uh, cool on that, yeah, that front. Yeah. Now, wait, wait, listen. Somebody new is coming in. You don't know them, right? They came through, like you said, social media channels. Yeah. Are you, are you sitting there? <laughs> listen, listen. Go, I don't know why you're laughing, go, but listen. Go. You could judge a lot by the person. Or, you know what I mean? Like, are they in the suit and like all? Are they like putting on a show? I should say. Oh, are they? You know oh, I thought yeah. you were going to ask me, are, do you look like this when you're pitching these guys? <laughs> I can imagine that you okay, just you dress normal, normal so, right? But but the person, they're trying to make a good impression. They're trying to, are you sitting there like this? Dude? Yeah. On, like, no, it's all, over, it's all over the place. Okay, like, okay. Skateboarders hit you up on there? Sometimes skaters do. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's all over the place, actually. Yeah. It's, it's, hmm. skate, it's skateboarders. It's a lot of, there's more other athletes, actually, oh. believe it or not, that hit me up than skaters. Okay. Um, and then there's like entrepreneurs or sales guys. Mm. The, the, the best one, the, this song, this will, this will spell it out. Uh, we get on the zoom call with this guy. He's 65 years old, Oh, lives in Arkansas. Right. And he found me from TikTok. Right. So, so he's like, amazing. he's like, Mikey, I watch your TikToks every night, 15 minutes. I send them to my kids. Like you are my guy when it comes to financial literacy on TikTok, right? Wow. And he owned this business out there. He was about to sell it, make, make a ton of money, right? Uh, never met him. Popped up from TikTok, right? Wow. And then we get, like, dude, what's cool is what, what's starting to happen more and more now is that we're getting a lot of people who used to skate, never pro skateboarders, but just grew up skating, mm -hmm. that then, like, started a business or did something, sold their business, like, dude, uh, you do real estate. I knew you from skateboarding when I was a kid. Like, I'd love to talk. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, and so, it, yeah, I would say the coolest part is seeing skaters mm. uh, make their way into other elements of whatever you want to call it, business sure. or life, but still, like, yeah, you know, have, yeah, that's right. Like a fan. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It goes yeah. back yeah. again, skaters supporting skaters. It's another right. thing that, you know, yeah. you, especially if you're doing something that, that's resonating to uh, apparently a lot of people outside of skateboarding with inside of skateboarding but just to see like skaters kind of be, just being like dude let me let me hit him up dude let yeah. me see what's it's going. cool man yeah. well, it's cool i noticed that you're you're for advertising or not advertising i guess but uh marketing uh for real estate like there's a certain type of real estate you're you're getting involved with like with the storage units or something like that yeah we have three different portfolios okay. so call it offerings uh, one is apartment buildings, one is storage, and then we have a lending portfolio as well. We basically act as the bank for commercial real estate. Okay. So it will always be one of those three, but lately I've been pushing storage because we're uh, uh, we're getting ready to we're raising capital and it's coming to an end, mm. coming to a close. So I've been okay. You know, let's okay. Get this I see. Let me right. break the checkbook. Up. You know <laughs> how much do you? Yeah. But what, what do you see about the storage? Checkbook? What do you see about storage? That's like gonna be big in everybody the needs storage yeah well storage so before i answer that i'll tell you a funny question i've been investing in storage a long time okay and when i was skating i used to tell everybody about it chris cole paul mike moshon you guys gotta invest in storage right and seriously none they all thought it was like the dumbest thing they're like dude this sounds so boring <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah. p rod finally like after like the third time of me saying do it p rod ends up investing in storage this is years ago yeah right uh 
And then now there's a, there's a lot more skaters that are kind of slowly starting to come around. But storage, it's a boring thing. Like, I don't know. Most people are not into storage because I just don't think it sounds sexy. Doesn't sound inviting. No, or, you know, what's like boring about it though? I mean, like uh, honestly, if your money is, if you can get the money back, what's boring? Most about, uh, okay. Yeah, if the numbers don't yeah, lie, yeah. Let's what's go. okay? So yeah. I hear you guys. I 100 <laughs> percent agree with you. I just want the I want the money or I want the return, right? You'd be surprised how most people, that's actually not the case. M most people want like a talking point mm. and they want a conversation built around their f friends of something that sounds exciting. So if like you add something where people are gonna go, what the heck is that? Yeah. Oh. And you have the option to make money, people like that. You so know? what do you do? I um, storage shoots. Okay, anyway, um, what else do you do? <laughs> yeah, so whatever. I, well, what I found is like, I like it and I think it's exciting. So I think mm. maybe people are like, oh wow, this guy's like really, hot on storage okay, okay. Well, tell me about it uh the reality is and now we go into the boring stuff people don't like getting rid of things like yeah. we are okay. hoarders by nature and so why i like storage i've liked it in the past is when times are really good we don't want to get rid of things and when times are bad and maybe there's a moment where we have to go through some type of transition or or downsize it's typically viewed as temporary. Mm -hmm. And so we need to put that stuff somewhere till we get back and then we pick up our stuff again. So what you see with storage, and I think why I've liked it so much is it does well regardless of the cycle you're in. Oh. Downturn, it, it's like one of the most recession resilient uh, asset classes. Right. And for me, like being a skater, like, I don't know, my view is always, uh, what can I invest in that won't go away? Because I was so counting on sure. that investment being there when the sponsors went away. Yeah, and yeah, storage yeah. was just one that was just, always there i get it i you get know? it it makes sense but it's not as yeah. creative right it's like you go to a, a storage unit and right. you're like okay there's like what a thousand garage doors here like, yeah. Yeah, 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 this yeah, isn't yeah. that cool where like an apartment building or like what kevion does like mm -hmm. these really cool designed homes like there's way more creativity it's a little bit more like we call it sexy it's just sure it's more beautiful yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know storage units you're getting lights that turn on by themselves when you walk down the aisle you know like we say like, dude air conditioned storage yeah, that's like yeah, the boom yeah, yeah. people yeah. are like okay wow <laughs> you know if people want to invest with you is there a certain amount of money they have to invest we talked about it last time right mm -hmm. it was like you had to be actually worth a certain amount or something investor. like that accredited investor yeah. but you were out also talking about how you could you were working on ways to not have that yeah it looks it looks like we're four months out on it it's been so this is a long time in the making i've been working on this for since 2017 that's crazy wow. Yeah, wow. yeah i've been wanting to get rid of this right when i realized that this was going to be an issue okay mm -hmm. okay yeah so basically like skating right like we're so used to like a, a really tight-knit community mm. right and like to move into a world that like excludes that community it was like okay well, crap like i'm i'm out here pushing all financial literacy how to invest in things and yet the requirement for people to invest in me is this high right right uh but it was a new offering it was th this new thing popped up basically in the the 17s job act the uh new tax incentive mm. bill uh and it was like there was a lot of unknowns. And so we are basically trying to do all our research. Okay, what does this mean to do this? There's going to be a lot more investors now. How do we manage all this? And we're finally there Okay. Uh, where we have basically hired the attorney to basically build it out. Okay, wow. wow. So what does so that minimum investment goes way, way down. Right. Uh, the requirement of you having to make you know $200,000 a year goes mm -hmm. away. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and so kind of to put it in context. To invest with us, you have to make two hundred thousand dollars a year yep. as an individual, three hundred thousand dollars a year as a joint, or a net worth of a million dollars, excluding your primary residence. Right. Right. And then on top of that, it's a hundred thousand dollar minimum investment. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a pretty high hurdle. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, right? but that's there to protect people, right? So for yeah, not them viewed, just yeah, being, you know, taking it, out loans and putting their house on the line. Yeah, it's viewed as as a. They use this as the benchmark of financial literacy, okay. right? They just this is the number. Right. And so like what terrifies them truthfully is people like me or people like Grant Cardone that use social media, understand marketing, understand uh, a lot of ways to get somebody to perform, right? That's very scary when it comes to investments because a lot of times you don't know what you're investing in. You're not aware of all the risk and what they're trying to figure out is like, how do we eliminate somebody from losing money, not knowing what they're actually doing, sure. right? right? And so they basically threw this on there and said, this is the line. Uh, but there's a flaw in that. It's like, dude, I, 
like we, we have big investors now, right? Like I've met a lot of people that make so much money, have no clue what's going on. Right. None at all. Right. They're just throwing. None at all. They have no in. clue how money works, right? <laughs> and then like I have friends that make sixty grand a year, sharp, right. totally know about investments. It's like that's just where we're at right now. It's this all over is the, the board. Yeah. Wow. So four months away from this, and then you're going to open it up. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to open it up like full blast? Or are you going to like put a kind of cap or a limit and kind of take it slow? We can raise seventy five million a year. And what are those okay. requirements now? That what it, what we set the minimum investment at mm. is pretty much the requirement, and then they don't want you to invest more than ten percent of your net okay. worth. I, I believe is on on the regulation A plus. Gotcha. Uh, but I do what it looks like now. Don't hold me to it. Right. But as of right now, at this filming, <laughs> <laughs> what it looks like is a five thousand dollar minimum investment. Okay. So it'll okay. go way, way down. That's a big That's, difference. Yeah. It's yeah. a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. And it gives people opportunity, <clears throat> you yeah. know, for sure. Yeah. But then on the other on the other hand, what we've been really prepping for, right now we have a little under four hundred investors. Mm. Dude, this thing's gonna go to ten thousand. Sure. sure. Yeah. You know, sure. So it's like sure. just the the management on our end, you know, we had to make sure that everything is in place and That's you know, heavy. Yeah. yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. I mean, this is people. Listen, you, now you're opening it up to the majority of people, and maybe they don't have that much money, you know. And like, this is their yeah livelihood and yeah. their. Mm -hmm. Is that something, something coming from you specifically SEC. that you're doing? Like, what, what do you mean? Opening it up for people that like don't have as much money to get involved. It's a new offering that we're doing that is. Uh, so there's different types of offerings that basically they allow you to do, and some you can market, some you can't, uh, some you have to be accredited, some you don't. Uh, one thing that I wanted to be able to do was market an investment. And when you market it, then there's a little bit more regulation and why the accredited investor qualification was there. Uh -huh. uh, the regulation A plus was a new offering really that they allowed you to market investment for non-accredited investors. There's other people that have done it. Um, we are going to do it as our company. It basically just means this is how we invest. And now, you know, a different group, I guess, per se, can come in as investors yeah. into what we already do. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it has a lot with you being a skateboarder and knowing what skateboarding or like, I don't know, younger well, skaters are working with? To tell you the truth, I, I think it has to do with my experience as an investor. Okay. And it's like, you know, a lot of people will say, dude, don't even, don't invest if you've only got 10 grand. It's not enough to move the needle, mm. right? For me, my experience when I first started investing, which wasn't that much money. You guys are aware of how much we made, you know, sure. 20 years ago. Sure, sure. Uh, when I saw an investment working, I was so fired up by that. And it built so much new obsession and focus that I wanted to keep doing. And it actually helped with my discipline of like, you know, not spending money and trying to live, you know, way, way below my means, it intensified all that. So like, I I know it worked for me, I want it to work for other people. Right. Where it's like, even if it's five grand, and truthfully, it's not enough to move, move the needle. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. But if it's the thing that gets you fired up yeah. and continue going, well, then it will be. Like something we say in real estate, right? You'll never get rich off your first deal, but you'll always get rich because of your first deal. I think it follows that same suit. Okay. It's like, okay. get in the door and then get to work, you know? Right, yeah. right. right. Okay. In your opinion, what is enough? And I know it's probably all over the board with different whatever you're investing in. Mm -hmm. What is it? What, what can move the needle? It's so hard to answer because everybody lives a different lifestyle. I know. Yeah. And probably what you're investing in as well. Like, yeah. So, so look, I know this guy. Uh, Adrian, mm. Adrian Brambilla, he's really big on uh, like affiliate marketing. Okay. Right. He makes, I hope he doesn't kill me for saying this. <laughs> <laughs> you could give us a roundabout yeah, or yeah. something. A roundabout. Know? He's say like six figures starts with it's about a million. Nine. It's about a million bucks a year. Okay. It's probably, okay. probably taken home. Sure. Uh, and a year and a half ago, he decided to basically get the sprinter. Hmm and start traveling around the nation. And he's a full minimalist. Like he's on this like fire movement, right? Uh, I think he was saying that his monthly expenses were like 1800 bucks a month. Wow. wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for somebody who's making a million bucks a year, yeah. who's living off 1800, well, gosh, way less than that moves the needle, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. So like the most conventional uh, kind of metric to use or that they use is the 4% rule. Okay. And it's like you can draw 4% of your portfolio and basically the size of your portfolio will never come down. So, you know, on that metric, it's like you got a million bucks. Well, 
this is what you get to you get to draw four percent of that. Gotcha. That's what you get to live off. Of. Okay, okay. Now you can make more than four percent. Right. You could. It, there's different ways to get there, but mm. I think that's the conservative way to look at it. Well, listen. When the when the four months is out, maybe uh, you can we can come back and uh, oh, talk dude. to you. Do a uh, whole nine club stuff. investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> Let's go. We got a couple lights we could sell in here. <laughs> yeah. There's some opportunity there for us. Raj, we could go from six cameras down to like two. You can sure. do something here. Yeah, we'll eBay, we'll be eBay a bunch of shit. We we'll start fresh. Here. We'll start <laughs> fresh. Some here. Uh, uh, Just kidding. Let me ask you a question. Mm. Are, have you always been comfortable talking about money? Because no. listen, in skateboarding, it's very tough for, to talk about money, yeah. right? We very all taboo. we could be very close with one another. You'll never talk about how much this deal was or how much you're getting from this sponsor, or whatever. Yeah. It's pretty tight-lipped, you know. Yeah. And I think people do get uncomfortable talking about money. Yeah. Was there a point in time where it just started to become comfortable for you? It became more comfortable. Uh, never in skating, not once. Like, right. Okay. When, no, I felt like, you know, I had my like group like. For like Dubs, Gavin, uh, Paul, Malt, there was a, there were certain guys that oh. like were focused in business mm. that I felt more comfortable with talking. But like, sure. dude, the majority of people, no, you never. Actually, I don't know if I said this last time, but <laughs> I never said anything about my financial strategy when okay. I was when I was going through skating at all. Uh, Saint Archer, mm -hmm. start Saint Archer. Sure, we sell Saint Archer. Yep, and dude, it's a freaking public thing, right? And at this point, I'm still like trying to be like under the under the uh, whatever you want to call under it. The radar. Yeah, I'm trying to be under the radar. Like, dude, I hope nobody finds out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I go it to, like the, talk to of the town. Bro. It's I a to, big thing. Yeah. Oh, dude! It's so huge. I go to Make a Wish mm -hmm. Foundation. Frickin' Tim O'Connor. This guy's on the mic. Oh, right. <laughs> you should Gosh. Hit. You and should I walk hit. in, dude. Right. And all of a sudden, Tim sees me, and he goes, "Mikey Taylor, newest millionaire in skateboarding, sold this business." And I'm like, oh. <laughs> "That's it." That's it. I can't hide anymore. Sure, right? sure, sure. But I still wasn't comfortable. What basically happened is when my career ended, right, I was in a very different situation than most of my friends. And I truthfully, I hoped to be in this position. It was different than what I thought it was going to be as well, especially being young. And I kind of felt guilty in a lot of regards. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was almost this like survivor's guilt yes. feeling to it. And I was like trying to figure out why I felt this way and then really where the guilt stemmed from I think is that I had somebody come in come, come into my life when I was young and helped me build out a plan helped me build out this discipline and ultimately I had the pathway to go do it right and I felt like because I was so scared of saying something to my friends then my fear stopped them from being able to participate in some of this stuff as yes, well gotcha. and so uh I think it was that realization where I went, you know what? I'm doing more harm than good being uncomfortable talking about money. So I was like, shit, I'm just going to start talking about it. Oof, and I was right. like, here we go. And it started with freaking social media, dude. It was I, like, I, we really I, jumped I, off the bridge. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I freaking jumped all the way off. Right. And it was just like, <laughs> I don't even remember what my first post was about finance, but I just basically went for it. Here, world, here you go. Wow. You know, but what I noticed it's is- It's a release though, sometimes. It was, but but talking about it on social is different in, in with somebody, right. you know, in person. Right. Like if I'm with like one of you individually, totally easy. Yeah. But like, dude, I was in Texas three weeks ago at, at uh, fin this big financial conference. And we're at this house and there's like, you know, 20 people around. And one of the guys there was a filmer. And he was filming like this, all these like financial influencers, right? Okay. And you know, the day's done, we're sitting in the jacuzzi and he goes, hey, can I ask you how much money you make? <laughs> right? In front of like 20 people. <laughs> Damn. Wow. And I found, I, I felt uncomfortable. I okay. was like, dang, should I say? You know what I'm saying? And, and I think it's just programmed in us to like not wanna make, well, I think there's good and bad with it, right? It's like, you don't wanna make somebody feel uncomfortable. You don't wanna have, make somebody feel this idea that like you are doing better than them, right? Mm -hmm. So I understand that one. I think that point's valid because okay. like, there is a part where that's a problem, right? Sure. Yeah. But then on the other end, it's like if if we're if we're never talking about money, is there a point where we're all being held back by it? Like we used to talk about this in the skate industry, right? Like you never talked about how much you made. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If no one knows how much other skaters are making, who who does that give the control to? The yeah. skater the or gauge. the company? Yeah, yeah. Not the skater. That's a, that's right. Yeah, it gives right. it gives more control to the company yep. to keep their expenses down. Right. Right? And so I think in some ways, like it would probably do us good. So talking about money and not make it so taboo and just go, dude, this is what I make. Well, so it this would, is what it, I spent. 
this is what I'm investing in. How are you doing? How can we get that up? How can we get this down? Yeah. yeah. Oh, at the same time, too, it would expose those companies, too, as to their kind of pricing tier, yeah. quote unquote, you know? Dude, like dude. what you're worth or what they think it's you're free worth. market, baby. Just yeah. a real free market. I was tripping. I was talking to Mike Mo a couple weeks ago, and I, I, I was just like, how much money were you making at DC? And he dropped it. Yeah. I, and yeah. I was blown the fuck away. Yeah. Just because you... Just us sitting here, you never think, I made a certain amount, you never think you were a friend making that much money. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, I, Mike, <laughs> keeps, Mike keeps partaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Look, yeah. But what, you guys weren't acting like you were this crazy rich group of people. No, and what I say about Mike Mo, Mike Mo, uh, one thing I really, really like about him is he doesn't have that problem. Like, he's really good at saying, this is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very you know, blunt. He, yeah. He's super good about it. Yeah. Like, yep, yeah, this is it. Uh, Danny Duncan, if you guys know Danny, he's the mm -hmm. same way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's yeah. like, yeah, that's how much I made. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? Oh, Danny Duncan's uh, killing it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. freaking slaying. <laughs> yeah. He is slaying. Yeah. Holy no smokes. Um, have you guys had Danny Duncan on? No, he actually Why? hit me up the other day. You should put him on. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. He's smart, too. He's Definitely. like, he's there's a lot more to him than people see. Well, and that's a thing that I would love to get a person like Danny Duncan on the show was because you see him in one light yeah. on YouTube yep. being just a, you know, I don't know how to describe that, a... Uh, you know, his little stunts and his weird like, stuff. Ja like jackass. New, yeah. new generation yeah, yeah, jackass. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. But there's this other side to him that is business savvy. That's right. There's um, where he came from. He came from skateboarding. He yeah. tried to make it in skateboarding. Yeah. He tried to go to the barracks and That's be right. this kind of massage right. therapist for yeah. skateboarders, which I think was fa was interesting. And it's like almost like, yo, I'm glad you didn't make it. Yeah. It doing that right, because yeah. look at you now yeah so, right yeah. so that whole timeline i think would be fucking interesting i do too sure. yeah. i think i think there was a story too about uh i think chris chan yeah told him to knock it off with the uh uh what's it called the massaging yeah yeah yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. and to yeah. get on youtube he's like you need to get on youtube you're blowing it yeah, yeah. and then he got on youtube and then he blew up and right. then he bought Chris Chan, the Tesla, yep. because of that. Yep. That's yep. Yeah. yeah, and Chris Chan's another one too. We've asked him. I've asked Chris to be on the show many times. He's a little, you know, standoffish, you know, because there is a, you know, there's the comment section, you yeah. know, and so there's a, you know, he lives these kind of two yeah. worlds side by side, the skateboarding world and the mm -hmm. YouTube world, and he's kind of perceived. You can't a certain deny how way. good that kid is on skateboard. He yeah. is. Oh, he's he so is good. Absolutely incredible. But he still li he still lives that line. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's a shame. Yeah. You know, there shouldn't be that line. Yeah. He does what he does. He's For a skateboarder, sure. phenomenal skateboarder. Yeah. I would love to have him on the show. Yeah. Same with like an Andy Schrock. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know I, mean? like, I would love to dig into these guys' minds. Yeah. You know, they are in the same industry as us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was uh, so at this. <laughs> so this financial conference thing. I anyway, to, right? shout out Daddy Duncan, bro. Yeah. We'll have Daddy Duncan's the man. We'll have yeah. the man. Yeah. This financial conference I went to, uh, they invited 15 of the biggest financial influencers on TikTok to stay at this house, <laughs> okay, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> and they invited me to go. What? So that's like, why you were there. That's okay. why I was there. I All was right. like, okay, I'll, I'll go. Uh, so much to talk about there. But one of the kids that came uh, came with a friend, and he's a YouTube skater. Okay. Right? And Do we know this guy's name? Or are we going to shout him out or no? You know what? I should pull up his name's George. I should we should pull up his YouTube account. Did mm. you ever tell the kid in the hot tub uh, what you make? In front of twenty people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had reservations, but uh, it came But out. going back to that, it's like, you know, maybe if you were a one on one with him, you wouldn't have felt so uncomfortable. It was the it was the atmosphere that he presented it to you in. Yeah. Yeah, it was but you know what? Kind of put like, you on the spot. Yeah, and it's like in the jacuzzi. Yeah, in the jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah, this right. trying to relax, my yeah. dog. Like, oh, his 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 YouTube is just his name, George. Yes, George. Pol oh, I'm gonna blow his last name, Poil Poilus. Okay. P O U L O S. He's got three hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, right, perfect. Uh, he's there, and I I never met him. I met him on on this trip, and he's like, hey, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah. And he's like, do you think it's weird for like the you know traditional pro skateboarders? Do they feel like the YouTubers is weird? Like, is that like separation real? Mm -hmm. You know, we had mm -hmm. such a good conversation about it. And to my perspective, it is real. Yeah. It's it's totally real. Sure. Even though we're doing the same thing, it's done a totally different way. And I think there's... He should just send his links to a company first. 
Well, I think what's great about that is the skate the core skateboarders aren't even seeing what he's doing. No, but the YouTubers are seeing what the skaters are doing. Yeah, so it's a really interesting. Thing. Yeah, they, the YouTubers have nothing to worry about. Yeah, the, the, the well, no, but you know what though? When I was a kid, I, I'll be truthful with you. I probably would have looked at that as whack too. Like sure. yeah. when I was a kid, it was like, dude, this is how it's done, and this is like. You know, we're kind of all the respect. We also grew up in a whole. Yeah, the nineties were different. The nineties were different. And then Mikey Days comes along. Yeah, then I started going off into obscurity. (laughs) (laughs) The nineties were different, right? It's like, at least when I grew up, like, dude, you hated everything, and it was just it was gnarly. Totally. Uh, But what I think now. I love the idea of somebody finding an alternative route I in. I love it too. I love that. Yeah. Like, I love it too. oh, I didn't go through the front door, I went through the side. I love that. Yeah. Sure. So, like, maybe this is just me getting older, maybe this is times changing, but I love what they're doing. I mm-hmm. think it's so cool. And I think there's something that, you know, the conventional group can take from that. It's like, <sighs> guys, you're missing out in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, these guys don't really have to, like, listen to anyone. I, I pre- there's no sponsors, oh, there's yeah. no reg. It's just them doing Well, they're their thing. making their own. Yeah, choices and yeah. they're their own boss. Yeah. It's the new like Jamie Thomas, so the new Andrew Reynolds. Right. Instead of them starting yeah. the business, they just go into basically YouTube becoming the business. And yeah. that is that you build your community. Then yeah. they well, guess what the community starts asking you for clothes, yeah, products. shirts, products. And you know what I mean? Danny like, Duncan just that's new why, business, new oh, business, new business. And that, that's the thing is yeah. like I I love it too, and I preach about it all the time on this show. It's like I I think every skateboarder. Yeah needs their own YouTube. Yeah. There there's a whole world that lives on YouTube. Totally agree. But everybody thinks of YouTube, they think of, oh, now I'm gonna be, you know, considered a YouTuber. I have to vlog. I have to do this and I have to do that. It's like, no, you don't. You can do whatever you want to do. You just if you put your old skate clips on there. That's put right. your old whatever. That's do right. a fucking tutorial. Yeah. You know? Right. There's so many different ways yeah. to yeah. go about it. Yeah. But right. a lot of people are scared. Yeah, especially people from well, our generation yeah. too. Yeah. They just don't want to do that. I feel it's like. a lot of work. You know yeah, what I mean? You gotta, wanna, you gotta want to do that. You too. have to want to do that. Straight and if you up. don't want to do that, then yeah, that's true. But yeah, I also yeah, think that true. they're also missing it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Don't do what you don't want to do. But they are missing that market there. For sure. That the kids not only watch your videos, but there's also a revenue stream. There, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know that's a possibility. I, mean, I most, feel like. Right? Oh, they should. Yeah. If they don't know that YouTube's a not a possibility for you for a revenue stream. Some of those kids don't yeah. even have a plan. They're just putting stuff on YouTube and just and it goes. Hits. Yeah. And exactly. they just sure. keep doing it. Exactly. For sure. They never intended to be a YouTube star. Yeah. No, yeah. Andy Schrock and these guys like. They it's they they made videos mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they started yeah. their community started asking for a product yeah and now they're one of the biggest they're huge. Do you they're guys huge. know who Lewis Mora is? Uh-uh. He does uh he, he core skateboarder kid makes videos and he started his own YouTube channel grew it over time now he's his own gnarly YouTube channel has his own company and he just grew up skating did it on his own yeah didn't have to do it. There's a lot of uh, yeah. John Hill. I mean the, yeah. the list is a long list. Yeah, you yeah. know. And I think that there's that sucks that there's that divide, you know, because listen, there's ca- there's different audiences to cater to. Also, yeah. Andy Schrock, their channel is teaching kids how to skate, yeah. you know, and then they're they're bringing in skaters yeah. into the skateboarding community, yeah. Yeah. which then discover core quote unquote core skateboarding, and yeah. that may go from revive yeah. to a zero, yeah. or an alien workshop, yeah. or a girl, you know. Yeah, I agree. Totally or agree. they may stick with the revive. You know, yeah. it's all up to them. That's right. But totally agree. Bottom line is they're bringing skateboarders in. It's a new a new wave. Which but then is that, is that called making it in skateboarding? What they're doing? Yeah, <laughs> they've made it. To, I, they, I, I'm, but, I'm saying bro, in skateboarding, me, like uh, because there's going to be a lot of core skateboarders that have no idea. What's who they making are. It yeah, oh, yeah. now? Does that matter? Yeah. Well, what's making it in skateboarding? I guarantee now? Yeah. you that 90 percent of our v- our viewers and listeners right now never even heard of these guys. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Let me ask this. What do you, I mean, do you think there's a good comparison with music being an independent artist versus signing with a label? For sure. And do you think there's probably a lot of people listen to independent artists and Way no more. one else, right? Yeah. yeah. And so would you consider them making it in music? For sure. So yeah. Maybe they're Same making thing. it in skating. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. It's just right. a new, it's a different. I hear you. It's a different way. Right. You're doing what I love and getting paid for it. Yeah, you're you know. banging in from the side door. Like yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You're finding an alternate way. Yeah. And that's what they've done. Yeah. I think it's amazing. And I guess it doesn't matter from the core skateboarders. It doesn't matter at all if they're known by these guys. You I, know what, you know what I like think? They're yeah. making it. I agree. Yeah. You I know agree. what I think? Sorry, Kelly, real they're quick. Good. You know what I think? It's it's a tough pill to swallow, even for myself. And it's hard to visualize that for any skateboarders until you actually get in there and try it. 
you know, like a like a Nigel Alexander. He's he carved the way, you know. Mm. But mm. All, there's also the fact that like five years ago, before we started the show, you would have asked me about YouTube. I would have told you to get out of here. You yeah. know what I mean? Now we're in that world, and yeah. I see it, yeah. and I'm like, I'm looking at everything, and I'm like, this is huge yeah, right. and a lot of the majority of these companies as well are not taking advantage oh, yeah. of this platform that has billions and billions yeah. of people watching yeah. there's only a handful of brands that are actually santa right cruz the comes to mind santa right cruz, off the top of the head primitive, primitive. yeah thrasher obviously thrashers yeah. killing it yeah i agree you know totally agree but these companies yeah I and agree. skaters yeah we're, for look, the most we're slow part. to it like mm -hmm. and listen i'm gonna get comments about that saying all this but it's so true yeah you yeah. know i agree I agree. We were fast to get on Instagram. I tell you that shit. Yeah, skateboarders were. Well, the they were. First they, skaters were weird that, on Instagram. That's, yeah, yeah. Well, that's In true. That's true. But it took the companies a long time. For sure. Yeah, yeah. long time. They I didn't know. like this. I, I I got ridiculed by doing social media. Oh, by by. You know what I mean? Like people were like, at the companies were like, dude, yeah. why are you doing? And now totally. it's like, yeah. why aren't you doing it? Yeah. yeah. And now that's like, you yeah. Know, I don't know. I yeah. know. I just trip out. Well, like I was gonna say earlier, I just trip out when people would come here. This is like maybe like three or four years ago, and we'd be like, dude, have you heard of Andy Schrock? I remember Jack Curtin specifically. But like, you ever heard of Jack Cur or uh, Andy Schrock? He's like, what the hell is that? We show him his YouTube channel. He'd be like, what the fuck? It's a whole nother whole world. And like most of the skaters, we introduce him to these YouTube skaters and they had no fucking idea. 75, 80% yeah. of the people that came and sat in that chair had no clue that there was this oh, like, yeah. parallel universe oh, yeah. of yeah. YouTubers. Totally. Totally. It's like the Spotify I just thought that aspect. Was, like yeah. you were talking about yeah. Yeah. music. You're, you're, you're totally right. I mean, I didn't think about it that way, but it's... Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And even if you don't, even if you're a guy out there that doesn't like that kind of stuff, I, I go watch what they're doing. Yeah. You know, know, like go take notice. You know, I do totally. I Dude, I wouldn't know who they were if it wasn't for Bork. He's the one that put he's me on to it. Oh, he, wait, yeah. he's in the YouTube universe. He's on the YouTube universe. He's like, dude, do you know who these guys are? I'm yeah. like, no. And he goes, dude, he they're like mad. And I was blo mind blown. Yeah. There's a whole like alternate world. I out know. Here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I think and, it's cool. You know, we get, we get hit up to have these people on the show. Uh, Johnny Geiger, you know, a lot of these people, but you know, we're not opposed to it. Yeah. You know, it's just the right timing. Yeah, and if, yeah, yeah, and yeah. if they want to come on the show as yeah. well, yeah. because I think it's fascinating. I think an interview with Andy Schrock, Nine Club, would be fucking fascinating. Where's totally. He, he yeah. He's uh, Ohio. 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 Have to fly up. And I think he's down, but he I think down, it yeah. would just be so. And listen, I, it doesn't even matter. The, the industry would take notice yeah. of that that's interview. Right. That's right. That's like, right. But we have Mikey Taylor here now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is what we're talking shout about, out to the bro. YouTube guys. <laughs> yeah, no, shout out, man. I love the hustle and I loved I love being this is what skateboarding is all about, right? Is is not conforming to being a regular right. suit and tie nine to five person. Yeah. You want to be your own boss. That's right. You know? That's right. And these guys are these kids are out there doing it. Yeah. That's right. So that's right. shout out. Definitely. Love that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thanks for coming, man. This has been great. No, just Listen, we have skate clips, dude. You want to talk about some old skate clips, dude? Sure. We yeah. have. Yes. This yeah. is one of my favorite parts because a lot of the memories get brought up, oh. the time, the place, even what it took to get that trick. Okay. Fucking love it, man. If you're going to show a video like of that. myself, I guarantee it took a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, okay. So first of all, you did speak on this before. Getting mad skateboarding. We do have your uh, oh, yeah. your uh, skate, remembers this. your mm. skate more intro where you're freaking out. Yeah, that yeah. was four in the morning. Oh really? <laughs> that was three hours. Try that trick. Three no. hours. That's why the craziness comes out. <laughs> yeah, when you're with Colin Kennedy and where was that Santa Ana at four in the morning trying um. to shove it nose grind? It's just it was awful. I mean, that's a little. It's a nice little spot. It's a hard trick though on that thing. Fuck. I remember it was hard, but I couldn't figure out if it was just hard for me. I don't know. But you remember me skating, all both of you, all yeah. you guys. It just used to take me a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know, but and then you listen, snap out of it. And well, I, was, I always yeah. related to you that way because you always. I did the same thing. I, I had to work really hard. Yeah. And I was like, there's this guy who's doing so well in skating, but I could. He's trying. Like you know, he had like a P rod who's just like fucked up good. Yeah. And you're like kind of jealous at that point. Or yeah. Like how do you have those tricks like that? And then we're over here trying for Struggling. eight hours. But yeah. I, that's why I thought you was so crazy. It's so cool to see that you were on that same level, but you worked, you, you were working way. Yeah, I was, I, I was the Gary V of skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I thought that was so sick. Just but. outwork everyone just to keep up. 
Listen, Brutal. Oh, here we go. Little, Still more. Little Mikey Taylor. Yeah, I'm in high school here. Logic Six. Yeah. Ooh, first, I love this video. First video part. Amazing. This is my first video part. Steve Ireland filmed this. Okay. That was Calabas High School. Yeah. Deer Dick. I have a good story about that one. Deer Dick made fun of me on that lip slide. Why? So did you know Deer Dick back then? So uh, <laughs> m- one of my friends, close friends, growing up was uh, Justin Case. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Justin Case was flowed by Alien when we were kids, and so Deer Dick and Ave came out to skate with us. And uh, the first time I met him, I was wearing, it was actually this day, it wasn't the first one, it was that one. Okay. So I'm wearing my shirt, my drawer shirt, my you know khakis. Deer Dick comes out three weeks later and I'm wearing the same freaking outfit, right? <laughs> and it was at this school, he made fun of me. He's like, yo man, do you like have one outfit? <laughs> do you, you just wearing the same thing every day? Every day you're like the drawers guy? And I was like, gosh darn it, dude, this big pro thinks I'm a fool, you know? <laughs> First of all, he uh, who's remembering what somebody's wearing I, well, weeks later? Yeah, shirt and shirt and I mean, I'm bright, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty bright. I mean, that's true. He looks like a creamsicle. Uh, but when I 5 would it, he gave me props. <laughs> he was like, yo, that was legit. Like, even if you are wearing the same outfit, that was legit. <laughs> I'm like, boom. I think Rob actually grinded it that day. You know what's funny, though? It's like nowadays, some pros, maybe it's not, there was a t- point in time where you would wear the same outfit to mm-hmm. make it look like yeah. you were oh, yeah, yeah. skating in the same day. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and see how there's the white shirt. Look, see all my color combos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the under shirt white. undershirt was big. Oh, you got the yellow underneath? That yeah. came from Chad Tim Tim. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yep, saw okay. him, I was like, oh, it's cool, I'll do it too. I don't remember this from, this This isn't from. Is this Logic or is this, 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 a, com- not- is this a compilation? This isn't Logic. I think I pulled this from Logic 6. I don't remember these tricks in that video. I mean, dude, this is my this is eleventh grade for me. I remember all of it. Wow. Were were you sponsored? So look, that front feet bowl, right? That's I remember that's I was on Santa Cruz there. Yeah. So I was Maple. So my first sponsor was Maple. Yeah. And then I did a little like four week window on Santa Cruz. And then Heath and Kareem were like, no more. <laughs> <laughs> and that right there, Steve Ireland's filming, but Heath Brinkley filmed the long lens. Mm. This was the beginning of Heath. Basically saying you're gonna write for City Stars. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. And that that took me two hours. So front really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't know how to front feeble back then. See how I almost pre mode coming off? Yeah. I didn't know how to come off of them. <laughs> but then you mastered that trick. And then I ended up getting good at it. Yeah. 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 But that's how you did all your tricks. So watch, it's yeah. I almost pre mode coming off. Look. It's gonna I'm gonna see there's no confidence yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't lift up or no, nothing. No, I knew yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. willed it. Right. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah, um, we will, yeah. So that was so this you, was my, that's my neighborhood. You were flowed. That's New Ray Park. You I was flowed, flowed by Maple. Yep. City Stars was like your first. Dude, this is like, that was the first handrail I ever grinded. Oh, wow. That was a Spanky. That was when we lived in Agora. <laughs> Hamilton. Yes. Yeah. Go back to the Hamilton clip. Yeah. This is the DMV. The this DMV. Is, that's when I became friends with Paul. His shirt goes like over his head right here. Yep. Yep. That, that, yeah. Oh dude, that God. was such a hot spot back then. It was super hot. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, this is my childhood right here. That's right. Yeah, I love the spot, salad. My legendary spot. Oh, right there's here. a DMV. Down. Yeah, oh, this yeah, is. I hate, uh, I think I yeah, P. Rod put us onto this one. Those were good benches. Was it only skatable on the weekends? Is that what? It was after five, and then on the week. No, after five, and then Sundays, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Got the double shirt on. Yeah, I ran the double shirt tough. I think I was sponsored yeah. by Duffs. Those shoes are Duffs. So I, I was think on a Duffs. lot of people ran the double shirt. I, yeah. I ran it first. Yeah. You still I, run it, Chris? Yeah, I know. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to bulk up. Yeah, yeah man. That was, that was by me. That was Fillmore. That's so funny. Yeah, dude. Oh, uh, Fabrizio Burnley. Santos. I met him that day. He knows Blunt Slid It. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Burnett was there. Burnett brought... Is that Burnett? Is that the Quattro's on? No, oh, it was Pete. Are... Tom- it was Pete. Uh, what was his name? Pete, Pete Thompson? Thompson. Pete Thompson. Pete yeah. Thompson brought uh, Fabrizio. Is that his name, right? Fabrizio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, dude, this Brazilian kid. He's like the next wave. And then he knows Blunt. So we're like, dude, okay. There's this yeah. guy's gnarly. Wow. Look at Heath right there. No, that's Ireland. Are you sure? Yeah, Heath filmed the long lens. That looks lens. like Heath. Heath no. would wear the hat like that. Yeah, yeah that right, looks he? like Heath. No, Heath filmed long lens. That was Ireland. And Heath was bigger back then. <laughs> Heath was big back that's then. True. Okay, <laughs> yeah, he was okay, almost three hundred. Wow. Oh. Got a good story about that one. See that rail right there? Yep. An OM popped up in my email two months ago of them selling that building. Oh, no wow. way. Wow. Yeah. I got the OM. Is the rail like, still there? The rail's still there. Got the <laughs> OM. I'm like, oh my gosh. It, it was not It was not a good deal at all. Okay. But like, I was so tempted. Like, how sick would it be to buy this freaking apartment <laughs> and have the footage of me grinding it when I was a kid now own it? Uh, but the number the numbers sucked. Wow. It didn't make sense. But it did hilarious. pop up in my... Uh, 
in my that's email. So funny. That's amazing. Where was that? It's in LA somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> that was one of my first Nolly Crooks. That, that I felt like I got next level on that one. <laughs> Dude, I mean, well, that's right when that trick was coming out. Yeah, Costin was doing it. Yeah, like a few people. Yeah. How old did you say? This you was were? my high school. This is when I was eighteen. These are okay. my spots. Okay. Yeah, that's the first annual I ever grinded. When I was a little, that was dude. Oak Hills. That's the Mormon church, or not the Mormon church. That's a church by us. That's when I met Eric Bork. When I nose grinded the rail. This is dude. This is memories. That's what. I'm oh saying. yeah, I remember this. Which one is that? That's when I was on Santa Cruz. There was before the runway was built. Hey, that was you could tell that was influenced by uh, Rick McCrank. Ah, uh, yeah, the right away, <laughs> right away with your, with your hands down, like trying to play like a twenty-five zero was easy for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh man, I think you're right. I think this is logic. Actually. Yeah. So this is, this, is, this is what got it started. So a lot of that footage was in my sponsor me tape. Okay. And then Heath was like, they were doing. Uh, I think Justin was in the video and Paul. Yeah. And they were like, hey, send me your sponsor me tape, and I sent it to him, and then they used half of it in Amazing. the video. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that's man, that was a good time, man. That Shout was a great video yeah. too, man. That was a good time. That was yeah. good, bro. Bro, this spot always comes up. Oh, for some Valley. reason, and that is mm. wow. That's a tough ledge to skate. Yeah, it is. That one took me two hours. Did it? And yeah, that's to me, like sucks. to me two hours isn't really not. It's not not. I've well, worked six, six, seven hours. Yeah, but shit. that's like a spot well, that you can get broke. Okay, so, on. yeah, I think that's the, yeah. But I'm just saying, two okay. hours ain't bad. No, I hear you on that one, but. If I'm like trying to tech trick for two hours, I get it there. But when you're scared, yeah, that's true. I think the the you being scared and intimidated makes the two hours feel even longer. Is, and then uh, jumping uh, off it, now your body hurts. Yeah, it's physically. It hurts yeah. the mental battle. Yeah, that was hard. And that was a spot that we grew up on. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a kid, Van grinded it. And we were like, oh my gosh. And then he tried to 5-0 it and went over the top and got mm -hmm. broke. Ooh. When we were kids, we watched oh. him get smoked. So that spot has always been terrifying for us, just yeah. witnessing that. So that, I mean, dude, 20 years later, that added to it. I mean, you did you did it really well. Thank you. Bro. Look, yeah. you Thank it. you. Wow, yeah. yeah, that was super sick. And I like that Thank you came you. out regular. Thank you. Really sick. That was towards shoelace belt. That was towards the tail end, I think. Was and this Man, towards the end of my career? Is it? I what is this in? Is, is this after is it like, Alien? This, like, might have this been is a after DC, Alien. Uh, this is a Discovery. DC video. Um, this was 2013, I believe. 14. Oh, wow. So yeah, this is this is close to the end. This is the beginning of fourth quarter, mid fourth quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, it's crazy to look back and go, dang, I did some. I did yeah, a couple I tricks. Did I did that. that. <laughs> oh, not, you did, not a, only you did a lot of tricks. Man. Yeah, Definitely. dude. Um, I mean, talking about tricks, this one, the backsmith. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. That was three trips. Three trips to that thing. Yeah, that How was three long trips. Each? Because it's an so see kind that, of a tech trick. See that there's a black spot at the bottom, right? Right yeah, when I, I land. I see oh. it. I see so that's that's Bondo. I, so oh. I came one time to do it. It took me oh shit, probably two hours the first time. Oliver shot it. He ran the photo, I didn't make it. And one I stuck like with the McCrank landing. I'm like, done. And then I hit the ground and just I ate I was bad. Right, because the ground was basically dirt. Okay, and so I was like, okay, shit. And then I went back to try it, but I bondoed it, couldn't do it. And then this was two days before the DC video, oh. and I needed basically a last trick. And you needed to get it because the photo's already been ran. Uh, it had been ran two years prior. I think. Oh, two years <laughs> prior. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Oliver always did me like. Did that. you go back to the same gear? No, no, dude, no, -uh. no. Yeah. That was. Awesome. But yeah, it's it was beautiful. Chris Ray filmed that one. I was stoked on that. There was I mean, a couple of times I was happy mean, to do. You, you held that on. You held mm -hmm. that really well. Yeah, bro. thank you. you thank you. Look at that like wingspan. That. Thank you. you. Hit that little kink at the Big bottom. Big guy. Thank bro. you. I, then, I don't. I'm sorry to ask this because I've never been to that spot. Is there two similar rails? Yeah, like there's that? another one. Okay. That you used to be able to do a line to, um, but it it kind of does a rainbow style thing. But the thing is, you can't really see it. Th those ra it's not a solid rail. It's like they put two pipes together and had oh, a connector. Interesting. So at the, and it's at the very bottom. So like if you were doing a crooked grind, which people have done, I, I, a lot of times I'm like, I don't know how you're going to get through it, but it's so close to the end that you can't really get through it, then go, ah, oh, got it, and then get off. Does that make sense? Interesting. Mm -hmm. wow. Was there anything they could do to like shave that down? We anything, I remember or? we used to try to like mellow it out, but I right. think we used to do it just with wax. You know, oh, stick as much wax as possible. Yeah, yeah that's switch what did. Yeah. That was Benny. That was Alien Video. There you go. I mean, wow. Switch 50, I, I, I can't do backsmiths at all, mm -hmm. but I would think that... In my mind, Switch 50 on this would the, be much more scarier. The, the backsmith, well, what I found was the backsmith was scarier to try mm. 
the Switch 50 wasn't that scary to try in the beginning because I went really slow, but mm-hmm. it was scary to get it to the point where I started going fast. Got you. Because I remember doing that. I was like, I, it was uncomfortable fast for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can mm. see the ground is kind of fucked up there, too. Oh, that was before yeah, the Bondo. Bond- oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Look, you landed right in that fucking yeah. thing. Jeez. Oh, shit. Yeah, see that stuff? It's bad. Look and then, that. dude, that was. It looks like a hole. That was yeah. five years before I backsmithed it. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, so that was that was wear and tear. It got worse, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was Etnies days, I think. Yeah. Oh, good old Etnies. Yeah. I love it, man. You were good at rails, man. And the big rails, too. I think I was better at rails than the other stuff. But. I mean, here's a crook. I mean, oh, look at geez. that, dude. A little lock in here. Yeah, I mean, that was. Jeez. That Mikey? was one of those ones that, like, it was before the bear up flat bar or the barracks flat bar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, like, that's so, like, not even that long anymore. But I remember when I did that, I rolled away and had one of those blackout moments. I was like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Where I was like, yeah. couldn't believe I did it. And, like, the lights went out. That yeah. was one of those ones. Now, how long did you try that for? Was so that somebody, somebody took me there to grind it. Oh. And I was like, okay, cool, yeah, I can grind it. And I ended up grinding it like two tries. And oh. I was like, dude, what if I just like stab a crooked grind? <laughs> and I kind of tested a few out and then one went like three quarters of the way. Oh, I'm like, holy wow. crap, I could do this. And then it took me like 20 minutes to get to that point again, but then I did the whole thing. So it didn't take that long. It feels to me, and I'm not a flat bar rail skater by any means, but the longer the stairs, well, that the more was, safe. Well, that was, yeah, because you could jump you out feel, of it. Right. Yeah, 100%. Right. right. What yep. was harder to do, that one or the one up north? In a... The one up north was harder. Yeah. Because the stairs were longer, but not as long. Mm. And so it was a little bit scarier. And then going up the curb, I, I suck at ramps. I suck at going up curbs. So Ugh. I remember that kind of threw me off too. Ugh. But I think the one up north looks better. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a But like, dude, that rail. thing now, like, dude, that thing would be front crooked. It would oh, be front blunted. Where's that at? Destroyed. It's Utah. Uh, oh, Jamie Foy doing a front crook on that? Oh, yeah. dude. He'd probably front crook fucking yeah, he'd, nolly heel out yeah. or some shit. It would be bad. <laughs> it would be bad. <laughs> yeah, it would be bad. It would be bad. No doubt. It would be bad. But good stuff, man. Thanks, I, I always yeah. trip out on you. In a good way, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. Like, you'd see, I'd be like, damn. Like, how did you do that? No, you you that look shit? back at the catalog of tricks yeah. you've done, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. After 15 years, I had to sneak a couple in there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> couple wows in 15. Yeah. Uh, that was a good time, man. But not only that, it's like it's the ledge bad. tricks, too. Dubs, this is a nice little circle. This yeah, is the circle edge we talk about man. often, right? Have you been there? I've been there. Didn't Dubs have a trick on there too? I tried to He do did that. switch heel out. I, I tried to do fucking that with the Nolly heel and it didn't work out. But so didn't I you did, do... it came out straight and it surprised me. I, I didn't even mean to do it. I did it that way. Wait, but... you did the switch lip switch heel, right? Yeah, but I didn't mean to do that. You tried to do switch lip switch 270 what, heel. Like that. Damn. But with no happen. heel. With that right? was hard for me, guys. Yeah. Dubs throwing heels into it. That was hard for me. <laughs> but wow. it shouldn't have been, right? It's like a switch... Lip I slide, that you put it on amazing. like a nose wheelie real quick and yeah. revert. That's what it should have been. But I had commitment issues. You guys know this. That was sick <laughs> as fuck, bro. I totally did. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, that was fun. Skateboarding's fun, isn't Hell it? Hell yeah, especially when you get come across obstacles like this. You're like, yeah. And make it work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one of those obstacles that felt like girl to me. It was like, oh, this is a girl Kai spot. Mm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This is a fully flared spot. Definitely. Ledge dancing. You know what? Actually, now that you say that, this was in the Alien video. So the Lakai video came out before the Alien video, hmm. and all of us went to the premiere. And I remember, like, there was some tricks in the Alien video that were definitely inspired by uh, the Lakai video because yeah. there were so many combos in it. Right. You know, and I think before Lakai, we weren't really heavy on combos, right? right? It definitely changed the game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I love that stuff. Hey, dude, here we go. But let's talk about uh, let's talk about getting Buck again, bro. Listen. Nice fitty fitty. There was some beef on that one for some reason. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> you did it twice. So Mike Mo, so Mike Mo and my relationship started off rocky. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's that's the truth of it. So when we were kids, or Mike when I was a kid, I was this age. We were skating at a school, and I knew who he was. He knew who I was, but we didn't say hi to each other. Right? We're just skating, <laughs> and I guess Mike Mo tried to switch back tail on the ledge. And okay. messed up, which doesn't sound right. <laughs> and then I guess I went and switched back tailed it. And he's like, dude, this dude's whack. He saw me bailed, showed me up. They used to call me big time Mikey Taylor, right? Big time. And I'm like, <laughs> we still do. And I used to always press Mike about it. I was like, 
one, when did you ever mess up on a switchback tail? That right. already falls on his face. And two, I probably didn't even see you. Like, you it's know true. what I'm saying? Yeah, but he did have that attitude back then. Yeah, so then like, you know, and he was early on like tweets, right? Mm. And then he, I think he tweeted me or said something like, dude, Vince grinded this rail. Mikey, just because he has followers, can do it. And like, Vince won't get the credit. And I'm no, like, oh, his dude, brother, his yeah, brother. Vince yeah, did that too. I remember. I was like, dude, what's your deal? I didn't know that. And then basically, Malto is the one who like became friends with Mike Mo and became friends with me. Okay. Bridge the gap. And we weren't friends still. And then so we were like, shit, I guess we'll hang out. And then we started hanging out. And then we like actually started liking each other. Uh, <laughs> And then it like actually became a really good uh, relationship. But right. So good. Didn't start off that way. I love that. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. He's one of my favorite people now. He's great. Oh, He's yeah. the best. So yeah. two different days. Yeah. Two different days. Yep. Yep. The first one I tr I wanted to five zero it, and so I went oh. there with Greg. I tried to grind. I did grind it. I grinded it like ten times that day, trying to five zero it, mm -hmm. and just couldn't get myself to do it. So uh, this one, you hit the concrete. Yeah, the other, other one, one, you flew yeah, over so the concrete. Yeah, I had this idea that yeah. like, you could ollie past it. It would look cool. It didn't, didn't look any different. So uh, it was one of those ideas that kind of went bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a tough video part for me, though. That was If I look at like the whole catalog, I felt like Alien was the worst part of my skating. How so? I, en I enjoyed it the least. Ooh. And I think it... I, I always thought it was obvious when you'd watch like pros... And you could tell who like liked what they were doing and who didn't. It just oh. came off to me in the video. Right. Uh, and skating was not fun for me back here. Like it was, that was it was not good. And job? I just felt like was it yeah, a job? felt like a job. It felt like, you know, there was pressure there that like either was there or I made up. But either either way, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a lot of dynamic with Alien, and it just was a bad time. I feel like there was a lot of different crews in Alien. Yeah. It was totally yeah, yeah. It was like totally segregated in a lot of ways, and it it just. I remember it just being miserable. And like, mm -hmm. it just wasn't having fun. And every time I watch that video, maybe it's just me, but I watch it through the lens of, gosh, I was not happy back then. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Right. It was a good part. Yeah, yeah sure. I, thank you. I liked it. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever we talk about skating becoming a job and all this, mm -hmm. you know, some of the comments fly in, you know? And it's just like, I think it's kind of hard for people to grasp who aren't in the position that we kind of are in. That it it does become a job and it does become not fun. So like at certain points. So meaning you interview pros and they say yeah it's hard because it becomes a job and they start talking about the challenge of it and then you have people commenting going people, if, uh, if I could do this I'd never complain about it right. Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not a lot, but you know they they do fly in. Yeah. You know where it's like oh god you guys really you're not hearing what we're saying. Well yeah. what's so you funny know? though you, I, I'm sure you guys are feeling this as well. You hear somebody say something and you go man if I was a kid. I would not have heard it that way. But being an adult, yeah, maybe it sounds different. Like yeah. when I was a kid, if I heard somebody say that, I would have thought the same way. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about this being a job. This is the coolest thing ever. Stop yeah. complaining, you know? Yeah. yeah and then sure. you're in it, you're like, wow, this is a real thing. It's a real job. Yeah. Definitely. You know? yeah. Especially, like you said, when there's like, you know, deadlines, you mm -hmm. know, for videos and pressure yeah. and ads to shoot. I mean, and then back, it's you, they're putting out there. Right. I mean, yeah. back then, there was so much more for a pro skater to do yeah. with ads, yeah. getting coverage in the mags, 411s, this, that, and the other. There was a lot that you had to do yeah. to keep up. That's right. Now it's just go get an Instagram clip. That's right. It's different now. <laughs> it's so different. Yeah, it's different now. It really is. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, good stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Dude, I love this clip because it's so, I don't know. It just doesn't, like, it's so buck. That was like that thing looks, look at that. That thing looks so oh, yeah. sketchy. That was one of my favorite clips I did because it did not feel like it was in, in my element. That, that is totally. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not a Mikey Taylor spot. I hate spot. cracks. <laughs> I hate everything rough. Yeah, that's. And look, I, you're I, landing on this like rubber like roof oh, thing yeah. that could like collapse. Yeah, that can happen. I yeah. just realized where that was actually. It's right a downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I I want a spot to be like skate park ground. Like I'm <laughs> yeah, that picky. Yeah. 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 Um. But you know what's interesting that like if you look at one of my happiest times skateboarding it was it was this time and then it was like in the beginning like City Stars DVS windows and like I look at that and go dude I would have never done that during yeah, Alien right. yeah. I was too miserable to even put myself in a situation like that <laughs> you know but uh, no that was hard that was that was three hours seriously I couldn't get myself to land on it because it was this uh, like metal mm. uh, mesh yeah yeah mesh top. And I didn't know if it was going to roll when I landed on it. And there was no way to test it. Because if it didn't, you were shoulder into the, you yeah. know, yeah. 
You could like tail drop off the guardrail. It's pretty much. Yeah. I was too scared to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I I'd, I'd ollie over it for freaking three hours and wouldn't try it. And then we got kicked out, and uh, and then that was what kind of motivated me. Like, okay, I'm gonna land on it. And then I landed on it one time. It rolled through, and then I landed it the next time. Did you feel weird bailing and landing on it just with your feet? Was it going to like cave in or something? Oh, it's I mean, dented. You could see yeah. it. Yeah. I, yeah. For three it, hours, I dented it. That yeah. looks scary in itself just landing on it totally. with your feet. Yeah, that was, that was three hours of just 180 pounds. Just that is sketchy. Isn't that, doesn't that suck? It's like, it just, it just takes that one time to put those wheels down. And unless you did it next try. Yeah, dude. And if you had done that three, two and a half hours ago. Dude. I look back at my whole career and ask myself, man, <laughs> if thing- I could just commit, would I have twice the amount <laughs> of footage? <laughs> you know? Bro, I love to skating with you would be like, all right, right here, I'll owe you a hundred bucks. Or like, oh. you always did that. Mm-hmm. And I did the same thing. Yeah. But never pay out. What did you, yeah, never you, pay out. <laughs> <laughs> what was never the craziest thing you think you bet at, on, on skating while trying a trick? Do you, can you remember anything specifically? Do you remember anything? Um, Shit. And did you ever do it? Did you ever give someone a hundred bucks? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you think yeah. you could like bet with Bitcoin now? Oh thank God Bitcoin did not exist. When I <laughs> oh my God. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> if any of those things existed, Venmo, pay any of them? Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, you imagine like I made a bet and somebody's yeah. like, hey dog. Yeah, yeah, swipe right. Yeah. right now. <laughs> you oh. can't get out of this. Now I, I gotta go to the bank now. I know. All right, all right. I know. Yeah. I, I can't remember what the worst was. Um, but you know what? This was always the way I justified it, right? I had a commitment problem. <laughs> that was it. I couldn't get myself to freaking land on my board. And so if I had to pay money to get myself to do it, that would then result in a trick, which then would result in a longer career, it was worth it. Right. I'd You're pay investing that. in yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. I'm investing down. in myself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is a cost I'm totally willing to pay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I'd say it a lot. Yeah, probably lost trust over a while with that one. <laughs> oh yeah, Reno. Look at that. Down the kink. Yeah, oh wow. Starts, I mean, that's dude. a big... Listen, people are doing that nowadays. You well, know? It's just so fascinating. Like that is not anything now. But when I did that, I felt good. I was like, dude. It was. Double kink? Here we go. Yeah. It's crazy though. Double kinks now, like you can't 50-50 them anymore. Like They have to be real gnarly trick. Yeah. for you yeah. to 50-50 them. And I feel like a lot of the rail skaters they like the round rails yeah. that's like a square one you know what I, I get that when i was a kid and why i'm all good with it back then i liked square back then okay but i definitely got to a point where i stopped liking square and i'd way prefer round mm-hmm. because it felt like you had more air like you had uh more wiggle room to mess up in a sense right mm-hmm. like if you don't get exactly on a square rail right you're smoked yeah, oh, yeah. right but like on a round rail you have, dude, you get on the heels you could be off low you cross it up all of a sudden like, <laughs> you could shift into lock-in mm-hmm. you know but if you had any type of shift on square oh my gosh it was bad yeah, yeah. did you learn you learned the cross lock-in like later in in your career huh yeah Oh yeah, I was always heels. Yeah, I, yeah. I always noticed. The that. only person that crossed it up was uh, like Rick and Mike. I feel like no, I guess Costin did too. Yeah, Costin yeah. did for sure. They used to always cross it up, but well, I, yeah, Costin did it in Mouse. Yeah, he on the flat bars. He did it on the crazy kink rail at the end. Yeah. When his last trick, he actually yep. crossed it. Yeah, I remember tripping mm. on that. Yeah, no, the cross came later, which I wish I would have picked up earlier because that's the way to go. Right. It's like it a seems like all grind. the kids now yeah. are doing the cross. Well, look, back 50s, when I was a kid, were scary on round rails. Front 50s were fine because it was heel for me. Back 50s were scary. Yeah, then you have Malta that's going toe side on a rail, which I thought was out of control. Backside right? toe side? Like- backside, Malta goes backside toe side on round rails. That's gnarly. Uh, that's psycho. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but the cross up is a feeble grind. And yeah. feeble grinds are so easy that uh, the back 50 was like, wait a minute, this is as easy as a feeble grind now? And then now you have what kids are doing today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's crazy. It's nuts. It's yeah. Nuts. That was a long time, too. Yeah, yeah, that was two hours, I think. Okay. Two, three. The hours. Average of two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, I was an average of there two. There were some moments that you got shit fast. Dude. There was moments, but I was always surprised by the moment. And what's so interesting, mm-hmm. I used to walk in thinking it was gonna be quick every time. Yeah, <laughs> right. like, you know, say how crazy is that? Like, yeah. like this one was quick. Sometimes oh, yeah? it was quick. Yeah, this was like four tries. That's it. No way. Yeah, but then I got smoked on the next line. Uh, uh, but after ten years of being a pro skateboarder, averaging two hours. I'd say, hey, Chris Ray, 
ready to film this? That'll probably be five tries. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Why would I say that? <laughs> yeah. Maybe Chris knows. Yeah. Uh, he, I already know what's going on. Chris is like, dude, you got it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was our That's spot. A good yeah. Park I mean, you had a lot of footage Park. of that. Yeah, that was a good college. Rails. Yeah. Dude, that, that, that thing that was scary about that was that ledge after. Yeah. Was. This is where I thought I was going to school. What do you mean? I always thought I was going to college. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's our local college. I thought I was going to do oh. two years there and then go somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, never happened. Yeah. Thank God, but... Didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good school. That was a really good school. It looks good. When did you realize you weren't going to go to college? <sighs> well, that's a good question. It's basically right when I graduated. And when I graduated, there was a City Stars trip. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. There was a trip that Retta put together in Italy that was a skateboarder trip. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And then from Italy, I was going to meet the City Stars guys in, I think it was like Amsterdam and then Germany, right? And uh, I remember like looking at my parents, I'm like, hey, so I'm going to like go do this. You know, and they're like, yeah, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, I think I'm going to like try to like be a sponsored skater and make some money. And, uh, you know, they freaking panicked. And then they were like, look, you at least have to make money. And so I was like, okay, fine. So like called, called the companies up. It's like, hey, you need to pay me a little bit. And then that kind of got, got my parents off my back for, for a while. But I think that was the realization that I wasn't going to go to college. Mm-hmm. Now, I always told myself I was, you know, I could, I could always go back. Um, and then my career just started going longer than I thought. And then it was like, oh, yeah, okay, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know? Wow. Was that a weird conversation to have with the sponsors? Like, hey. No, it actually, it wasn't that bad because I used my parents as kind of the scapegoat. Yeah. And I was like, I, okay, so let, let me think about who the first conversation was. No, this is before City Stars. I got Santa Cruz to pay me a little bit. And I got, I think, Duff Shoes to pay me a little bit. I think those were the two. I think it was like 500 bucks. I was going to oh, say, wow. what was it, like three, 500 bucks? 500 or? bucks, yeah. And uh, I called them. I was like, hey, look, guys, I have bad news really bad news <laughs> right i was like i love being sponsored by you guys i and then i started kind of painting the picture right i was like look i think i could be a big pro skateboarder i think this is my opportunity but my parents are saying i have to go to college i have to quit skateboarding but i got them to a point of saying if you can pay me i can do this and not go to school so look I, i'm looking at you guys do you believe in me if you believe me i need some money or i have to quit right you know, and that worked. It yeah. worked. Wow. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. So then I was off. I was Take off to the kids. But yeah. Kelly's right, though. It, I mean, that's a big conversation. That doesn't always yeah. work, kids. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But you know what? At least I said it, and I yeah. was able to use them as being the bad guys. Right. You yeah. know. And then once I got plugged in with Kareem, Kareem helped. He really, really helped. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Then he started meeting with sponsors. He's like, these guys are getting paid. I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's tight. Yeah. I love that man. Yeah. Hey, this is uh. Oh, oh, Cardio ledge, oh. nollie flip nose. See the braids? Yeah. With the, with the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the corn. Okay. That was three in the morning in Sacramento uh, by the girl who did Beeble's hair. Beeble took me to her. Oh. So, so on that trip, so even before this trip, we used to always go and stay at Beeble's house. Yeah. It was like that little place that like Rafter the lived at. and best. Yeah. And... Uh, was it J Street or something like that? I can't or? remember. He had a couple places up there. Mm-hmm. It was the place. Oh my gosh, I was with Beeble when he quit Expedition to ride for Girl. Amazing. And I and it was at his house out front, and we were like, oh my gosh, Beeble's gonna ride for Girl. Because, you know, growing up, yeah, that was the course. company. And I was like, remember tripping on that. But this was a trip I went up to stay at Beeble's house, and I wanted to get my hair braided. So he took me to the girl who did his hair at like two or three in the morning. <laughs> and then I woke up with Ewan, did that the next day, and then drove home. Fell wow. off, fell really? off fresh, got the, got the I was like, yeah, yeah, the I, so I tried it the day before this. Oh, right? you did? Yeah, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't even put my freaking foot on the nose. I was too scared. See what the hair does? <laughs> and I went Bro. to Beeble's that night, right? We drove back to Beeble's and he's like, did you do it? I'm like, no. And then he's like, yo, you got to go back tomorrow. I'm like, all right. And then I just brought it up like, yo, do you have anybody that'll braid your hair? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And I got my hair braided. And then I remember, dude, my hair's braided. I have to get the clip, <laughs> you know, and then it, and then it worked out. Wow! Yeah, so yeah. Because you went up there just to do that trick, just, right? Yeah, I, I, oh. I needed a last trick for uh, this is in Bloom, and uh, I wanted to do that trick. Went up there, had never been to that spot, didn't realize how crusty it was. Yeah. It was gnarly, so much gnarlier than I thought. 
And I just couldn't get myself to do it. And then I remember one, like I probably bet you and money. I was like, if I just do this, and I finally put my nose on, my feet on, and I did the next try. That's it. But that's a perfect example a, of like a, I spent four hours doing that. I could have done it in five minutes if I right. would have just tried it. You know, <laughs> but you commitment. Could, the yeah, issues. there was it was it wasn't that safe of a ledge to just bail on because you couldn't like walk down it really that so, good. So my brother did a nose slide big spin on it. Oh yeah, right? and he did it so easy. Not this day. It was another day. He did it so easily that I remember thinking, "Gosh, this ledge is like mellow." And then like when I get to it, I'm like, "Dude, this is terrifying." I don't know what he was thinking. It was like easy for him, but. Well, it was also just trying a no slide. The to hard, get into the it. hard yeah. thing about this thing, it was a downhill runway. It was super rough. You know, I like the skate park ground. <laughs> the stairs, you were basically landing in the stairs if you messed up, and it was slick. Mm -hmm. And I loved wax. It was slick. So that was a scary part. Committing to get your foot on there because you didn't know what's going to happen. Exactly. You slip out. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. That was yeah. a textbook Nally flip, bro. Text yeah, perfect. Yeah. That felt good. I that felt good. The beauty of the skateboarding is that. A lot of these tricks that people do, you know, and, and talking about them here is like, that looks so textbook, looks so fucking good, but you would have never known the background and how scared you were to do Terrifying. some of these tricks. Yeah. I was scared know? of most. Yeah. And it's interesting to hear the timeline between like when this happened and Beeble getting on girl. Yeah. Sure. That was like the same. That's crazy. Yeah. Dude. He got on girl a little bit before, but I, I'll never forget that night. It was that night. He was just like talking. To, I think he was talking to Channing. Really? And he's oh, like, no. yeah, I've got to oh, leave. No. And we we're like, he's doing it. Now, were <laughs> you guys listening to it? Or oh, was yeah. he outside? He was outside and we were listening. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. On your line. We were totally, totally listening. dropping on that one. Or? Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like our friend was about to write for a girl? That was like unheard of. Yeah. You know? Wow. Damn. Too funny, dude. Yeah, that was cool. Did he like hang up like, I did it, guys. I did it. <laughs> yeah, we were like, yeah, it was sick. It was yeah, wild. it was sick. We felt like we had insider information. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those times. I remember because we'd go up to Beebles and skate with yeah. him in Sacto yeah. at night and light up these like bumps to, to you know, trash bins. Yeah, and that's right. Triple sets and yep. all that stuff. That's right. So yeah, we did it all. Chris, so do you remember good. that one time me and you went and stayed at his house? Was that I, with Dario? It, it was Dario. We didn't yeah. go together, but we were both stayed at his house for like a week. I think I've been up there with you before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, those are good times. Why were we were just there filming? Oh, really? Yeah. And then I I, what did I just I just cruised up? Yeah, with Dario remember, maybe. Dario, I was Dario? with Dario. You were with Dario. You met us up there. What What was your translated part? Time to shine. Yeah, maybe that's when it was, huh? Mm, no, uh, you because was I was John that. Holland. Oh, it wasn't Dario. You, no, no, you were just on your. I think whatever the Quattro wheels. I yeah. think you were filming. You had some stuff in that video. I don't know. It was like a re like. Was that before you got his house? No, it was no, at his house. Oh, at his, his house. house. Yeah. I do remember. Somewhat yeah. early on in his house. Yeah. I do remember. I'm just wondering why I was there. It wasn't. It was just like a filming mission. We just, let's, you know, we would just do that. Guys, this is such a tangent, but I, I've got to ask. Do you guys keep all this stuff set up? Yeah. Throughout? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys just live life with it like this? We don't live here anymore. I don't live oh, anymore. you don't? No. no, we all moved out. Oh, so this is just the studio. Yeah. 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 Oh, you guys really are doing it right. <laughs> oh, okay. Could you imagine? No, if, like, I was like, seriously, we all like, lived here. Actually, Dubs lives here too. It's I was like, like <laughs> how do you guys do this? Okay, anyway. Well, let's get back no, here. to be honest, it used to be, yeah, when Roger and I lived here, yeah. Roger would get kind of more fed up with it than I did. Yeah, because, I would. It was a point where, like, we we're breaking things down, putting it back up. Yeah. And that just became just too much. And then, um, so started leaving everything up and just like bumping into things like gets old after a while. Yeah, you guys got to. But like we did that. have a lot less stuff. Back yeah, this then. is. Gnarly. I mean, it was literally yeah. just yeah. cameras and a table. Yeah, and it wasn't. You had a couple lights set up. Yeah, but you guys now, have upgraded. Yeah, it's taking yeah. up a whole place. Yeah. I love it. I wish we had more room. You know, I think the problem is, is you know, we want to stay in Venice, right? So you want to stay in Venice? Yeah, man. It's just around around this zone. But it's just if we wanted to get an actual like studio? warehouse or studio, uh -huh. I mean we're talking like thirteen twenty grand a month. You want to buy a studio? Do you think you need a space that big? I mean, listen, yeah, we we're I mean we're we're already overflowing here. Okay, that's fair. How many how many you guys use this spot and behind right three bedroom? Yeah, I mean even I mean we got oh a couple you got stuff in this back space, here. Storage space. How many? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Like, so the out? other thing, actually, Mike, you'd be really good at this. Is yeah, the, do you have any room at the Skechers, Skechers building? At, in the, at the, the case, case Swiss. Swiss. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry. So look, we're, we're building out our space, mm -hmm. right? It's going to take eight months. And we're taking over right now like 3,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Once we move out, it's available. But where is it? It's in Westlake. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> too far. It's in Westlake, guys. Shit. Yeah. Shit. It's a nice area. But we have this other thing called the green room, too. 
Yeah. yeah, and we, it, you guys are more like you guys are having skaters come on. It, it, you don't want to make them drive out to us. Like, yeah. I mean, this is definitely is pro- more and neutrally. we live out here. I, I, I think the, why the Nine Club was successful in, in it was because we all lived in proximity to each other. Yeah, and it was just so easy, like yeah. to skate over here, drive over here. I, yeah, I could even walk over here. Yeah, you know, I love that. Well, yeah. good, dude. Here's to Nine Club success. Uh, you know, like I said, we're trying. I love that's all we're all doing. Skating's tough. You know, it's a tough business to get into as you know i mean you know you've been you've dabbled in little skate businesses here and there yeah i think it's harder than everything else it is <laughs> it is skating is so no hard joke. Yeah. yeah i mean you you've experienced too you've done business inside skateboarding and now out of it mm-hmm. skateboarding's hard yeah. it is definitely but we got we got lucky we're gonna be honest with the yeah. business that we got <laughs> yeah. okay you know? yeah yeah um but yeah but it you is, actually it is. went outside of skateboarding though to hit that luck true yeah, because it was considered like streetwear yeah, and, you know, yeah. definitely right, got right. Uh, appeal from other cultures for sure. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. If you're a core skate brand and you're trying to make it in skateboarding, like it's... Yeah, yeah. it's hard. Totally. It's hard. Staying core. It's hard. Yeah. Be poor. And that's why people, I think, all, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, dog. <laughs> stay, <laughs> core, stay core, be, 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 be poor. But he, it was like yeah. this. It was like this. Mm-hmm. Stay core, be poor. <laughs> <laughs> But, but there it just are sucks some, to say, there are some right? solid yeah, businesses like, in skateboarding that have been successful. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't deny it. You know, one hundred percent. No, it's and just like, totally. speaking like Santa Cruz. Like, look yeah. at that, bro. They've yeah. been around for fucking yeah. days. But they've been, yeah, they've been around for forty years. Think of how many like accounts they've already yeah. have. Of course, but they've gone through ups and downs of course, too. They've been like, like any business, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But right, they right, found right. a way to keep fucking the lights on, and it seems like now they they are really killing it. Yeah, so that's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and that's skateboarding, right? Skateboarding is a wave. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes it's down, and cycles, then yeah. it's tr- man. How do you? There's a lot of companies that just don't survive that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's a lot it's of skaters that don't too, though, right? Yeah, totally. What yeah. do you think the average lifespan of a skater is these days? Pro skater, it could be a long time. You think it's getting longer? You think it's getting shorter? You think it's getting longer? Depends how you're. Depends keeping up with the and say that again. Who, depends who and what you're writing for. I feel exactly. Like. I think your your board brand is obviously. I mean, that carries weight. Can also the pressure anything, you put on yourself. True. And the expectations that you have on yourself. You know. Well, uh-huh. I mean, look at someone like Ashad. Ashad's been around. He's an OG now, almost. Yeah. How long has Ashad been here? Ten years. I mean, I would. At least, right? At least, yeah. Number yeah, least. I think, yeah, for maybe sure. a little longer. But oh, yes. has he? Yeah, maybe yeah. he hasn't been pro for 10 years. I don't think, but... Okay. He's been in the game for a while. He's been in the game for a while now. So is like, a, do you think a 10-year run is like expected now, or do you still think it's like a big move? Because I remember when I was a kid, like that was the... That, if you go 10 years... I remember Deirdre told me that. Yeah. Go 10 years, you're going to win. Go yeah. 10 years. That was always the hurdle. Yeah, you leave your mark. Yeah, I mean, fuck, dude. I don't think it's that hard nowadays to go 10 years. Like again, depending on who you're with yeah. and what you're doing, because you can go through. Skaters go ha- gonna have their ups and downs, and if you have your backing by your fucking, you know, your company that you know, I mean, I'm just speaking off reference for myself, but I've fucking had the ups and downs, and I've had the back from fucking girl from, from day one. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. So right. I don't know. I guess it's all depending on who's helping you in the process yeah. and, and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you're, yeah. If you're staying involved in skateboarding, it. you're always gonna be in skateboarding. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Right. Yeah. So it is up to the individual and how your body. Yeah. Uh, ages. Yeah. But 10 well. years sounds like a good yeah. run for yeah. sure. I feel that. Yeah. Hey, random question. Because you're, the, thank you. When you came on the show, you got me all, I got oh. my hip figured out because of you. Thank you on that. How's your hip doing? <laughs> Sucks. No, it's fine. Oh, is it good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, can you, like, can I, I've had, like, I, I can't move. You know like what? I used to. Okay. Well, let's continue this conversation. I had so many people hit me up after that interview based on the hip stuff. Mm. Is this what your hip felt like? This is what mine felt like. Um, no, mine's good. When it doesn't I, hurt anymore, right? It used to like mine well, used to hurt. No, mine was like once I had surgery, it was there was a point where it was still sore like any surgery. I think you have this window where you're like, God, my body's never gonna be the same. Mm-hmm. And then it starts getting better. Uh but and the big butt, I did my hip and my sponsors went away right after the surgery. Yeah. So I never was able to or I shouldn't say able, I never attempted to put it back in that type of scenario yeah, 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 yeah so i don't maybe that maybe it wouldn't have been as good i don't know hmm. interesting you know but like when i fixed it it was like dude i skate like 10 times a year now yeah. it's like so minimal that i, yeah. I don't know it feels yeah. great <laughs> you know not having any problems you know it's smooth maybe if i start skating every day maybe it'll hurt i don't know i working at uh, park i know i know 
It's close to you, no? It's close. It's just it's it's there's two there's two challenges I have with skating again. Okay. Consistently. Sure. One is uh I'm very obsessive. It's just how I am. And there's somewhat of a concern that if I start skating again, I'll get pulled back so quick. Mm. And I, I, I can't afford to do that right now with where the business is. Like right. I, I can't just step away from the business, right? Mm. So there's that concern. <laughs> uh, it's almost like a drug addict, right? Like, or, or, or if you're addicted to alcohol and you're like, hey, maybe I could just have a beer again. Like, I think I'm that person. Okay. okay. Um, and then the other time, the other thing is like, we're in the middle of like building a business, which is, as you guys know, it's so time consuming yeah. that it's taking everything. And then you add the kids on top of that. Then you add the marriage on top of that. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to even sacrifice, mm-hmm. I think. And so that's what I'm up against. Right, um, right. You know? Because you need your downtime, too. You need your decompression time I and do, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I do. very important. I do need that. The the And maybe I could find it. Maybe all I'm saying is just like, hey, if it gets to a priority, maybe it'll be that. But like right now, I've got maybe an hour a day, maybe 30 minutes to an hour where I can have that like you know decompress take myself yeah. out what it is right now is going to the driving range okay go to the driving <laughs> okay. range i hit balls for like 30 minutes i'm back in the office that's like my my mm. moment but if i like you know want to okay i need to go decompress and go skate dude i'm an hour to p rods park i'm oh. two hours skating at p rods park i'm an hour back i don't have four hours you're an hour to warm up no so what what i could do maybe this is in my future is build a skate park like P Rod did with okay. an office component, sure. to where I can actually work at the office, like Jamie scenario. Hmm. Step out, skate for thirty minutes, back to work. Okay. Maybe I could do that. Factory. Yeah, maybe I could get there. But would our, you invest in that for yourself? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't You'd like know. to start your own skate or have your own skate park. They're that's, expensive. That's They're expensive. Yeah, but it has some expensive. little basic budget shit that you can fuck with, like you know. <laughs> Like, is, look, that, is that inspiring? Look, yeah, I don't know. Can I, budget can, I, <laughs> can, I <laughs> can I put a flat bar on a box? Yeah. On some warehouse floor? That's not gonna, that's not a big investment. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I think the other part is like <sighs> it's just for fun. You yeah. know, like it's not a career anymore. I don't make money doing this. Mm-hmm. And so do I want to go through all that for? I don't know. It's exercise too. You it's know? exercise. Yeah. That that can do some weight right now. Like, <laughs> But I think I'm still at that point. Like, even though it's been almost six years, I still feel like I'm in that, like, I don't know. Threshold of... Yeah, like, it's not totally just fun again, right? Like, like when I picked up skateboarding the first time, going off, like, the job thing, like, skateboarding was just fun. I just loved it. I wanted to become a pro skateboarder because I didn't want to stop skating, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the sacrifice I'll make. You get get skateboarding, you turn pro, then it does become a career. You have to find a new love for it, right? That's true. That's what I had to find. Right. My new love for it was the business side of skateboarding. That's what I started really getting into. And then once the the career went away, I no longer had the business side, which was my new passion for it. And the old passion, it, it's not here yet. And so I'm hoping maybe it comes back. Yeah. Right now it's not yet. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm out here just waiting. Yeah. You know? When you say <laughs> when you say when you were skateboarding and there was a business aspect of it. Yeah. What you, did that I mean by that? Lo- yeah. Yeah. So basically, when I got my first shoe, right? Mm. Tim Gavin calls me in. I'm gonna get a shoe on DBS, right? Okay. I think we did talk about this. Right. That the uh, the numbers. Yeah. Well, this this is what kind of happened, right? Like I was forced to figure out what it meant to sell product. Right. Yeah, I get yeah. to work with a designer. We get to bring this idea to reality. We've got to sell the shoe. And then social media hit and it was like, holy crap. Now like I have access to people and I started looking at my career less as what's the best trick I can do and more total picture. How can I increase my brand to get more presence to then sell more product? Mm -hmm. And even like doing like deals with companies like dude, when I was a kid, like he remembers, I used to call him all the time. Like it was just firing from the hip. Like I'll just work, yeah, DVS, like let's just do a deal. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. And then it was like when I started getting older, it's like, okay, who could I position myself with to take myself to the next point and help them along the way? What's true partnership looking like? What's like, you know, not just taking lines. advantage of somebody. Yeah, right. No, it's just like it started looking at the total picture of like, what do you get out of this? Mm-hmm. And then what do I get out of this? And, it, and it, I was no longer only trying to get. I get to skateboard for free or I get to skateboard as a career. I, I wanted to figure out what else came on top of that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I started yeah. really liking that. Like it was really fun to like strategically plan on how I could 
make my brand bigger and make my name bigger, sell more shoes, mm -hmm. make more money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I think that's great because I think a lot of skaters, I think it's 50 50, right? Some skaters don't even want to yeah. think about that. Yeah. They just want to go out and skate. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But other skaters do, like yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually adds an extra you know, incentive. Yeah. And I so think it's, speak. as you, as it happened as I got older, maybe right. that is a part of it. Right. right? Where right. like, maybe I had to become more strategic when I got older. Cause everybody started becoming a lot better than me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it happened when I got older. It. Yeah. It, did. it was Etnies. It was Etnies when it really started happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because you were more involved with the brand? Well, so DVS, right? Uh, I get a shoe on DVS. I, I really start enjoying the process of selling shoes, right? But I felt like I wanted more than it. And I remember, I, we might have talked about this. I set up a meeting with Gavin, right? Did we talk about this? this. I, if you did, please talk about so, it again. I set up a meeting with Gavin to basically pitch him on this whole idea of me being more than a skater, right? Like, I'll help with the team. I could help with, you know, branding, what the whole nine. And dude, bless his heart, he actually listened to me, right? And then I stopped talking, like, what do you think? And he goes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like dude and it's gavin you know sure. he's like dude are you kidding me like dude just go be a pro skateboarder this is the opportunity right and then which was the big reason why i ended up leaving for etnies is i was friends with heath and heath was around me when i was talking about this i want to be more i want to be more and and he basically said, hey, look, what about you riding for Etnies and you being more? We'll give you the whole shot to help design with shoes. We'll help with the team. You'll help with the all of it. And I was like, cool. And, and that's what I was looking for. Right. And then when I started basically going on Etnies, I realized I was not equipped to <laughs> participate in the way I wanted to. Right? I had no people skills. I was. I just I didn't understand business really at that yeah. point. But what I took from that was Etnies is not my company. I'm just a skater and they will always look at me as a skater. And right now I'm trying to be more than that. And it doesn't make sense. Like if I'm ever going to have this, I, I, it has to be my company. Yeah. And then that's what ended up moving towards St. Archer. So it was like, I'm thankful. Thank God Gavin said that. And thank God he then gave me the opportunity. And thank God I didn't, I wasn't wise enough to go, gosh, it's actually me. That's the problem. Yeah. I took it as I need to start a company. And then I was like, holy crap. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. You know? Right, 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 right. So that's yeah. how it all kind of panned out. But what went with St. Archer is like I was still skating at that point. You know? So well, it was like, you had other people. Like you weren't the guy that had, you know, the brewmaster, yeah, this or that. Like you had a fucking full team. That's right. But, but, but that's right. But my point is like because I was still skating, that's really where it started kind of finding my rhythm of like business. Like mm. looking at my, my personal brand as a business. Mm -hmm, right. And even mm -hmm. like trying to do deals with people is like, me trying to negotiate it myself was like, I was like, I was just getting better at it, you know? Yeah. So. Love that, man. I always trip out how sure. skateboard, act, the actual act of being a pro skateboarder is, and then you go into the business side of skateboarding is a really whole different scenario. Totally. Like, and it's on, it's almost like working for a brand is like not, it go, it's different than being as a pro skater, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. You go in there, you have certain things you have to do. You have to get deadlines, blah, right. blah. Like, there's deadlines for videos, but. I don't know, this like getting production stuff done, that's fucking nuts. I think that it's, it's like important. Like skaters don't really, sometimes skaters get bummed on the company or they yeah. get mad or they want to quit or this and that because they, they don't know the business side. Yeah, yeah. I right. communication. And, and the communication as well. I think too. that's why team managers have always been so important for us, right? It's like we need the lise, uh, what was that? liaison, liaison or middleman yeah. between the actual business and the thing we're required to because, dude, I was the same way. Like, yeah. dude, I didn't yeah. understand it. I and, used to get frustrated with the team managers. I don't want to do that. Well, that's the thing. The team managers, sometimes they don't have that communication skill, yeah. right? And it, it, it leaves, listen, there's certain situations in skateboarding where if something's going on, right? Maybe you're not selling that many boards. Maybe your boards aren't in the line as much mm. or whatever. And like, there's probably, there's a reason, maybe a reason behind that, right? And if the, you're not being communicated that, yeah. like why that's happening, you're in your own head being like, oh, fuck these dudes. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's never us. It's never, yeah. right. Yeah. But, but nobody's, no, but but nobody's you, sitting around telling yeah. you, yeah. hey, this is why, this is why. And if they did, yeah. that could be a very like yeah. easy, oh, that's why. Ah, I get it. No, no, no worries, guys. Yeah. Like, I get you, I get you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. And yeah. then how, right. to, how to work through that. That's right. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's a shame. 
Yeah, that's right. It should. It should happen. Yeah, we're all right. grown men. We've had these feelings. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it'd be like seven series, and then you're in two of them. And you're like, dude, what the fuck? But that's just the way the things worked out. When you have like ten dudes on a team mm-hmm. or eleven dudes, and they're all pros, you can't have seven series with twelve fucking boards in each yeah. series. You and it's also and then you got the popular the ones that sell really well. Yeah, but it's also due to. You know, even yes, Roger, you have a point. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. like all of a sudden you have a, a stack of so and so's board over here, and they're like, "We're not going to order any more of his boards." Because- so you want the team manager? You have like, "Hey, Chris, your boards aren't selling, so we'll yeah. put you in every." No, because this isn't that that that's not the way that it happens, right? Yeah. It's not about how many boards you sell because they're very good at projecting what boards are going to sell and everything, right? So you have to know that there's certain aspects around this. Why, why there's like 25 people on the team, what skate shops want, what they do. You can't have all these boards four or five times, six times a year come out with everybody in the series, you mm. know, and then, and then yeah. they're definitely, there's so much more to it yeah. than just oh, like, no, oh, your sure. board doesn't sell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a reason everything's going on, you know, mm-hmm. and it, that's just the communication aspect, right? It's like, if we, you know, if you, somebody came to you and was like, hey, Dubs, this is why, blah, 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 blah. I'm just using it again. This yeah, is yeah. all over skateboarding, sure. you know. Mikey Taylor, oh, this is why your shoe is blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay, conversation, I get it, you know. Shoot, I don't but know. I, I also want to have those conversations, too. It's my, like, if I'm seeing that in the catalog and, like, I'm not happy with that, then I should be like, hey, you know, what's the, you know, the problem? Like, is I know, there but a reason it's tough. A lot of skateboarders don't want to, like, yeah. Yeah, cause it, conflict. It probably was it's, something as simple as like, oh, the artist completely forgot to do your graphic. Yeah, that could, that be, could a be a reason. Too. That yeah. could be a reason yeah. as well. What's up, Mikey? You felt a little. Uh, you're feeling a little iffy on this conversation. <laughs> no, I love the conversation, yeah. but uh, I'm just taking myself back. It's like when I was a skater, if anybody gave me any reason why my product wasn't selling, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have accepted it. I would have blamed the sponsor, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Right. So it's like, but not selling. Like maybe yeah. a, a limited. Like your board wasn't in the line. I know, but I, I would like I would have taken that as like, dude, you're leaving me out for sure. Even yeah. if you had a conversation about why the logistics of it, what's selling, like it e- depen- everything, it would have depended on the age. When I was oh, younger, for sure, n- no way. Like you know, let's see, DVS, no way. Etnies, no way. DC, yes. Mm. So that was a, that's like at the tail end, right? <sighs> when did I write for DC? Five, it was like my last five years. Okay, okay. so. I would say, I mean, let's chop it up as like, shit, I don't know. First 10 years, it would have been tough. Maybe the last two years I could have pulled. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. At least for me, like, dude, I was a pro skateboarder. Like, there was ego involved. There was like, yeah, I'm yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't ever want well, to you hear were, that it wasn't me. I mean, you were a big name back then at that point. Yeah, too. that's true. So it's, yeah. That's true. But I, you know what, though? It, it, it would have been harder for me to hear being left out of a series than a product not selling that much. Well, mm-hmm. listen, I think that it definitely happens to. Because that's how trends in skateboarding. Like, your shape might not sell. Well, I don't even think well, it's that. I think it'd be they like. Change my fucking shape. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think looking at, like, it's me, Doves, Kelly, Chris. And I'm the only one not in the series. I'm looking at my friends who are also kind of competition going, why are these go? How come I didn't get it? I feel left right, out, right? Yeah, right, right? And my whole career, all I ever wanted to feel was wanted, right? Sure. I wanted the company and I wanted to feel like the company wanted me. And when you get left out of things, you don't feel that, right? Now I have a completely different understanding, right? But because nobody's like, telling you, you why you got left out. No, no, no. Nobody's telling me when you got left out. That's true. But- I think before I understood the business side of it, even if somebody was telling me that, I don't know if I would have totally understood it. Right. Yeah. You know, right, because right, I right. think I could have come up with enough excuses to think I was proving them wrong, even though I don't think that was true. Yeah. But like, until you have to worry about bringing in enough revenue to cover your expenses and what names actually sell, and you talking about forecasting, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, some people sell more boards than others. 100%. Right? Yeah. And yeah. when you're creating a series as a business, you typically want to sell as many of that product as possible. So you're looking at your options, right? I could sell a thousand Chris boards. I can sell a thousand Roger boards. I could sell 50 Mikey boards. Sorry, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Go on with these two on but this at least one. Yeah, 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 but at least yeah. now you're in the series. Yeah, but now I'm at least in the series. Yeah. But maybe the, if there's five Mikeys that can only sell 50. I'm not going to put all five at 50. Yeah. You sure, know? sure, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Communication, the hard part, what I think we were talking about earlier as far as like most skaters just want to skate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if the business side is... But it also happens, you know, this happens kind of, like you were saying, like a little later down the line, yeah. right? Because there's companies, there's always new bloods coming in and new kids and generations change yeah. and stuff like that. So the older guys kind of... 
you know, get into a different yeah. vision, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, you know? start working smarter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Starting TikToks. And shit, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, work smarter, not harder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what they say? Yes, that's yeah. what they say. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very true. Yeah. yeah, that's tough, man. No, skateboarding's an interesting world, especially when you start looking in, you get older, you start seeing the the business side of it. And then when we own a business yeah. inside of skateboarding yeah. and like yeah. how do we grow? How do we do this? Like obviously having skaters on every week is it's like it goes back to like the danny duncans and the chris chans and uh, andrew hubermans and stuff like that that we have on the podcast that could elevate yep. us and then we get some people are stoked some people aren't yeah so it's like a double do you, it's a very interesting position to be in yeah it's like how do you navigate that yeah because we want to do it for the culture yeah 100 percent. that's right but that's right same time that's right we got to stay in business to be able to do it for the culture. I think that's the hardest part about business and skateboarding. Yeah. Is yeah. that you want to stay true to the culture and, and kind of what Roger said, that's typically the small demographic of your audience mm -hmm. and then you got to freaking make money to stay alive. And that's the balance you're playing. And that's what's tough, right? Yeah. It's because sometimes what happens is like you, we have sponsors mm -hmm. and different things. And then people start questioning, well, why do they have that? You know, why are they doing, oh, they're just selling it. There's money grabbing and stuff like that. And then you're like, well, no, no, let's look at this in a different light, right? We want to support skateboarding. We want to support companies and skateboard companies. And we all know some skateboard companies don't have a lot of money, yeah. right? So what are we going to go out? We're going to go and charge the little guy thousands of dollars to do this thing? No, yeah. we're going to charge the big boy yeah. ten, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars so that we can support yeah. the other little guys, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that's why, you know, and we don't always do stuff like that. Yeah. But when it comes around, it's like, man, this is... It's a lot of fucking time and money to run this fucking thing. That's right. It's That's crazy. Right. People right. don't realize that. So I give them the benefit. It's just, you know, yeah. it's cool. I understand. You yeah. just comment, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I feel you. I totally feel Imagine you. Imagine if your business had a comment section. <laughs> well, I mean, wow. we, we have an Instagram, a YouTube, a TikTok, a, you know, yeah, you in do. some oh, regard so you it do. does. So you do. Okay. Yeah, and Summer Guard does have a comment right, section. Right, right, right. And so yeah. does every other business out there. So if you have something yeah. to say, you can go say You got a Yelp? Yeah. If you're on Yelp, it's a huge. Uh, yeah. Well, yes and no. Mm. Uh, like properties that we have will be on Yelp. Ah, okay. But the business doesn't have a Yelp actually. Mm. But that's interesting though, because if you swoop up a property, we don't that... brand our properties. The company though. Got gotcha. you. But that property could have bad Yelp reviews. Oh, How oh, do you... oh, 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 oh. I, okay, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For it's sure. all the way a problem. You do you hire people to help you with that. Get good comments or good oh. responses. Because, yeah, having bad Yelp reviews will change your business. No doubt. Yeah, now, it's a little bit different, like, a restaurant or a, or a service where it's, like, you know, maybe more experience-based. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, you're going to get people that are pissed off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just natural. It's uh, going to happen. But, like... Just if they had a bad day. On something like storage... Uh, if you're running a poor operation, then maybe, yeah, you'll get reviews. Right. But it's not that crazy to run a good operation <laughs> on storage, yeah. you know? Like, no, uh, no AC. But, like, it, it, apartment buildings, you could, you, it, you'll you see more reviews sure. poorly oh, on sure, apartment sure, buildings, sure. you know? Yeah, yeah. And then it's all based on property management, you know? Right, right. So it affects the, the investment, but as far as the Yelp reviews, it highlights more the property manager, even though it impacts the investor. Mm -hmm. What's that one thing? Is it called neighbor or? Oh, dude, gosh. I'll get like emails from like. Yeah. No, yeah. it's. Uh, is it, dude? I get like, next door, next, next door, door. next door, yeah. and I'm like, oh my it's the worst god, app. yeah. Oh. And I get it. I don't know why. It looks around here, a lot of people it's are psycho. saying shit. Yeah, it's psycho. It's psycho. Stay away from that app, dude. Yeah, gosh, I get like notifications through an email, and it'll be like. Emails My every day, property bro. manager's the worst of all. I'm like, yeah, but you're live also like if you're in like a, a suburb or something or like a little neighborhood. I'm in a neighborhood. Is it suburb, crazy? Crazy. We will what, not what, go on that thing. What's going on? Like, what? Give me some examples. What's going on there? Like, are they talking about like the next door neighbor not having this oh, lawn cut? Yeah, it's 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 in my perspective, it's a platform built for people to complain in your neighborhood. Yeah. So like Instagram world, right? Like, dude, there's a good chance I never see you in real life ever. On next door, I'm walking by your house all the freaking time. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like a social platform that makes people feel like they could say whatever they want with no, uh, you know, impact to their life. Except 
you do have an impact. I'm living with you. Yeah. Yeah. You're my neighbor, right. you know? So, like... My girl uses uh, an extra app all the time, but she uses it to find, like, um, Handyman and stuff deal. like that. Yeah, so I think... Stuff. It works great for stuff like that. I right. agree with you. Yeah. It just, at least... And maybe it's my neighborhood. I don't know. But it seems like the highlights are always, like, the complaint groups. Oh, yeah. And gosh, will they go in? And when someone goes in, then it just empowers the next. And right. like Dog one, took one a of shit our on my lawn. one of our neighbors, right. uh, here's a uh, video footage of it. Right. One of our neighbors. Well, there's two parts. Now I don't won't go on it anymore. But I'm just now hearing what he's saying. He's renovating his house, right? And we live in this community. It's like it's an Eichler community. It's like these really cool retro designed homes. Mm-hmm. And uh, dude, he took one that was f- f- pretty gross, and he painted it black, right? Like a like a real matte black and like there's a lot of like wood accents it's cool looking right i'm seeing a lot of that style it's sick looking but there's a lot of people in our neighborhood that are older Uh, right and they don't understand it they're like you're ruining our neighborhood you i can't believe you painted this house black and so like that would just be one example of everyone going in on this Mm -hmm. dude's house the last Mm -hmm. the the last one i remember is like some one of our neighbors got chickens right they got chickens they were making their own eggs right (laughs) you know and dude people were not stoked because these things wake up and they're a little bit loud (laughs) yeah they were not stoked it was just like i think what it is is it's very easy for you to move past the gosh this chicken's waking up and we're hearing it to these are terrible owners these people need to die it goes so far off a cliff and then they just see each other outside yeah and it's like you i think that's just one of the cons of social media it's like really easy to bring out our worst you yeah, know yeah. that's you, you so, don't yeah i don't like that one but then again it's like i think certain platforms just incentivize more bad behavior that's than good true. i think twitter i think it's really easy to be bad oh, on twitter for sure, yeah. for it's, sure. E- it's just easier to be your worst on twitter yeah. instagram i think it's a little bit easier to be better yeah you know yeah i mean we're kind of like held accountable because like people don't know who you are usually yeah, and I think this the yeah, I think the thing about Twitter. I think about to... I think about Twitter all the time. Yeah. Actually, I don't like Twitter. Uh, I think the fact that it's limited characters mm-hmm. makes you on this like just let me get to the point quick. Yeah. And you know when people read things, it's it's really easy to misunderstand mm-hmm. their tone or whatever. Totally. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least on Instagram, it's like for the most part, it's videos, and then you have your caption. But it's I don't know easier to capture what you're actually trying to do. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Anyway, how's the uh, the TikTok comments? Are they just as well? It's different. It's mm. different. The reason I say that TikTok's algorithm is incredible. It's yeah. way better than Instagram's. Right. And TikTok's algorithm is they put your video out to a small group of people. Gotcha. And if there's a certain ad or a certain percentage watch of that small people, then they put it to a bigger group. Then right. they put it into a bigger group. Then it goes full blown viral. Right? Kind of like YouTube's algorithm, in kind a certain, of certain extent. Kind of, yeah. But then you have the ability to hyper focus it on a niche. This is where it starts getting powerful, right? So if I'm going to create a piece on tax efficiency, right, I can put hashtags, and those hashtags are going to be that focus group, right? Mm. But now you can do things like direct it towards a group that is not going to like your content and a group that will like your content. Oh, so wow. then you get action in the comments, 50% hate it, 50% <laughs> love it, right? Which gets this stuff out there. Yes. And so uh, I do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in doing that, dude, I get crazy comments. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just what it is. But, uh, but you want that. It's like you, I'm doing it on yeah, purpose. Well, like, sure. I want, Are you I monetizing want, your TikTok? I monetize it different than most. I, I, I bring attention on our business. So yeah. I, I always look at my social media as like, this is a good way for me to show people what right. I'm doing over here. Right. But I don't do like brand deals. Because uh, I know like TikTok will pay you to make content. Yeah, it's like really. Joey's it's, doing really well with it. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm in like the creator fund. Mm-hmm. It's like nothing. Mm. It's like, I don't know. I think I get like 80 bucks a month and that's on like millions of views. Yeah. So it's really small in comparison know. to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever tried to take you those videos you do and put them on a YouTube channel and start like something like that? Yes. You were dabbling with YouTube for so a while my, with your podcast. Yeah. So my yeah yeah. Uh oh. Uh, here we are, guys. Uh, I put all my TikTok on Instagram, so yeah, I'm doing yeah. all my TikTok on Instagram Reels, sure. right? On YouTube, they have YouTube Shorts now, yep. where YouTube Shorts is actually like they're, they're it's, putting it's, a lot of gas it's towards popping, it. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing about my YouTube, I kind of let my YouTube just be out there and I hadn't put content out for like two years and so there's a lot of people that are on my YouTube that don't even know this is what I do now yeah and so I just started filming some videos to just help 
uh, brace mm. the <laughs> user. Hey guys, for what's coming? <laughs> uh, this is what I'm gonna start putting out there. Don't panic. This is what has happened, right. and then I'll start putting all my TikToks on YouTube Shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that would be a way yeah, to do it. And should. then, dude, if I had a product, then that would be a good way. Mm. We just don't have a product true, like true, that. True, true, yeah. true, true. Uh, your product's information, though. Yeah, I, I think that's I, I good should say product. this. Yeah. yeah, I should. Say, we don't have a product that we sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say is the best way to say 100%. it. It'll come in time though. If we did, then yeah. I could monetize it maybe more like others. Yeah, I just think that the, man, these these platforms are great. You know, yeah, we we're I just agree. talking about utilizing YouTube and stuff like that. And there's just ways now to do that. Yeah, you know, I agree. It's, uh, it's totally a, agree. Anybody have any experience on the Discord? Grind? Yeah, we have, yeah. We have a Discord. Do yeah, uh, our, our, our nine night? club Discord's pretty good. Definitely. Yeah, monetizing it. Uh, no, no, we're not monetizing it. Okay, guys, ready for this one? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm in TikTok influencer house, mm -hmm. right? 15 people. The oldest one's 24. Okay. Okay, so. You're the dad. The oldest one than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I'm full-blown dad. They call sure, me dad, right? Sure. And uh, I'm hearing about their businesses, and, and this one girl uh, was saying their main business is Discord, hmm. right? Okay. Her Discord's been here a year. She's yep. already made a... a, a one point two million netted wow. to her okay. from the Discord, and I, I had never even heard of Discord prior to this. I'm oh, like, what? It's, a, it's an amazing the, thing. Wow. Oh my gosh, I was tripping. What the hell is she doing? I know. So, so she does it around uh, financial information, and she's hyper focused on stocks, mm -hmm. and she's a day. She does day trading. Mm. Shit, that might be too much information. Uh, nobody would know. Okay, so. Uh, She'll basically be the person that people go to to find out why things are happening. And okay. she'll kind of like, hey, this is why this is moving, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then there's other people that have gotten into the group that are kind of the, what do you want to call it? Uh, I don't want to say leaders, but that's the only thing I can think of, of explaining it. Mm. Uh, moderators. Moderators. Boom, yep, that's yep, a good yep. one. And then they start working in where they're like adding value to the group. Right. And then it just you create this community and it sounds like a pretty rad one that you can make yeah. money on. But how is she monetizing that? She charges people to get in. So oh, basically there's three okay. levels right, right, of right, right, right. payment Maybe. and that's based yeah. on how much content you can get. Yeah, for like we have a, we have our own Discord. Um, this is verified. It's the Nine Club Discord. It's uh, about, about 3,000 members or something like that. Do you guys charge we, people to no, be in it? No, 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 So no, that's no, what no. she it's would do, It's a skateboarding. Right? It's different though. I you agree. Are, you as well I, know. I totally agree. Having skateboarders to come into our community. Totally agree. That's why we have it. So but she's putting out content specifically on discord yeah yeah that's it's kind of like it her patreon it's, yeah, it's exclusive content there on discord and yeah. a lot of people do that there's a lot of like hey support right yeah. so if you have certain categories in a discord so categories channels all that stuff they act as like you know like forums yeah right so everybody's chatting and whatever so they'll be like locked forums locked channels so if somebody wants to you know, pay for this, then you connect that to your Discord, which yeah. unlocks these other channels. So maybe we leave it at this one. For anyone watching, there's yeah. an opportunity out there with these Discords. <laughs> there is. There <laughs> if is. you can create a community and exclusive content, you can make a lot of money. Yeah. It's interesting. Because there's, a, like you said, a year ago, like Discord? Yeah, what totally. the hell? I mean, we're just learning about it right now. Yeah. It's fucking insane. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It's, it's totally insane. insane. Yeah, totally Started insane. with video games. Yeah, right? Isn't mm -hmm. it like a Twitch platform? or it, was... it just started as a video game for, for people to connect in there, well, I believe. Instagram started for photography and That's TikTok true. started for dance. So right, That's, right. Yeah. TikTok, what was it called before? Musical.ly, I think. Musical.ly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wasn't it, wasn't it That's called Musical.ly? Right. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I heard of that. I didn't know that was the... It was. Yeah, then they changed it. Yeah, because I remember the first... You know the first person told me about TikTok? Was Heath. Heath Brinkley. He's like, you got to get on TikTok. And I was with Paul. We were in Colorado for uh, Zoomies trip. Yes. And I looked at Paul and he goes, don't go anywhere near it. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, there's like people like, you know, sex predators on there. He's talking crazy, right? And I'm like, whoa, Heath. Like, <laughs> for real? He was so early on it, though. He was like, no, dude, this platform's going to turn into something. And then I think it took me another year or year and a half. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. But he right. was on that super early. Huh. Wow. You enjoy it? Um, I guess well, in other words, like, I, I don't. It's, I don't enjoy I the social media. It, yeah, I so use it differently than most. It's hard for me. Like, does, it, does it work for you? I don't use it as a as yeah. a. I don't. I try not to be a consumer. Would it be a consumer on it? If I just pick up the app to look at it, mm -hmm. dude. Seriously, forty five minutes will just go away. Yep. It's yeah. so it's easy psycho. to suck you in. Yeah. Yep. So I try not to use it in that regard. Really, I I just try to basically create stuff and then put it on there. I like what TikTok's doing as far as helping get the message out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to me right now, it's the best one 
then maybe YouTube. I think right. those are, are the two power players right now. Mm-hmm. But dude, I use them all. It's like LinkedIn, sure, Facebook. Sure, sure, I sure. never go on Facebook. No. Yeah, I never Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe when you get older, you'll go on Facebook. I don't 65. know, dude. I don't know. I mean, no, look, Instagram will probably be the new Facebook in what? Five years? That's true. So that'll be the same. Right. Yeah, wait, what do you do on LinkedIn? I never well, use LinkedIn. It, it, my idea with LinkedIn was, okay, here's a business platform that like I could create content like I am out here and be a little bit more focused on having like a business niche. But what I found with LinkedIn is like, dude, it's just a bunch of people wanting to sell me something. Like yeah. it's so rare that I find anyone other than, hey, I love your business. We're great at, you know, uh, digital how, marketing how we and we together? can scale your business. I'm like, I'm not in that business. What are you talking about? And it, so mm-hmm. it's a bunch of bots mm-hmm. yeah. and it's a bunch of people selling. So I, I don't see a big return from it, but I still post on it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it initially for, based on what LinkedIn did, did in the beginning? Wasn't that just to kind of like put your kind resume. of resume out there? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? And now and it's get just jobs from into, there yeah, almost. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I was like, look, dude, if there's a bunch of people in business yeah. looking at content, okay, let me put out some real estate content mm. and have somebody figure out that, oh, these guys are doing something cool in real estate. Oh. How do I get plugged with him? And then now all of a sudden we have a new lead for an investor. Yeah. Right. That was my thought process. <laughs> we get more leads from TikTok than anything. TikTok is the one. Yeah. Crazy. LinkedIn, wow. nothing. I don't think I've ever gotten one lead from LinkedIn. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. TikTok. TikTok's the one. I just started TikTok and I'm I'm just looking into it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but we could give I could give a quick tutorial. It's not hard at all. Yeah. Okay. We but just, it's a different audience. We just started posting a couple of nine club things on there. You should. It's, a test. it's hard though because yeah, I think we answer. actually need like an editor you yeah. know, that could put those things together yeah. and yeah. post them. Take yeah. little snippets out of this episode. Yep. Stuff like that we talk about. It's tough though, three minutes. We have kind of long form conversation sometimes, but yeah. But you know what though, you don't don't use it as means to get long form content out. Right? No, 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 no. Use That's it as a grab to get you yeah. to watch the whole thing. No. Right. Right. You know? right. 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 So you take like you know moment like this, like let's just say like dude, dude, P Rod is the worst skater ever. I can't believe that guy went any right. And then we spin <laughs> off, guy, dude, I hate when people say that. And then you just use that little clip. Mikey yeah, Taylor yeah, yeah. thinks P Rod's the worst skater ever. <laughs> 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 Total Shot clickbait value. stuff. <laughs> Don't click me, it's done. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's interesting. That's where I think we need some people to help yeah. us with that. Yeah, and it's then so that tough. dude, just get in with the kids. Yeah. I mean, dude, you yeah. don't think some kid would be stoked to edit content for the Nine Club and be around you guys? That's huge. Yeah. Of course they would. That's true. I think it'd be fun to have some sort of creators um, creating animations and just shit like that. On One, oh, wow. One thousand yeah. yeah. percent. Well, that's where You've Discord. have been talking about that for a while. That's I'll where Discord comes in. Yeah. yeah. Because what we what I utilize Discord for for our nine club is like our experience show. We have a section for Jerron called Budget or Buttery. People post Ooh. in that channel what they want I to know <laughs> what Jerron thinks Correct. is Budget or Buttery. So they'll be like, oh, wooden tables with a coffee stain on it. You know, is that Budget or Buttery? Yeah. You know. I love that. Stuff like that. And then what I, we, we recently started doing was asking people for sound bites yeah. of our experience yeah, show. Totally. So now they're contributing yep. to their show that they like. The yeah. biggest thing Helping I've learned is it. when you can get people that feel like they're helping in the process and yeah. a part of it, that's the most powerful thing you can do. Okay. So it's like... You know, yeah. I think for us, we're like, gosh, a kid would just want to come here and like help well, us edit. Well, also, for... I, I, there's a part of me that just like, I, I don't want to take advantage of people. Okay, too. So, uh, you know that's, I mean? okay, so I have this conversation with my wife all the time, yeah. right? Because we talk about bringing on interns, et cetera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, so you're trying to tell me that when you were 17 years old, you wouldn't go do anything to be around Eric Costin? And I was like, I would have done anything, anything. Anything in the world I, mean, I would have done. That's true. Yeah, right? That's true. So it's like how many kids are like that out there that get to see all of these pro skateboarders because you get all of you guys and then the guest. Right. Dude, heck yeah. yeah. And then that's yeah, opportunity yeah. for them to meet people, to learn something. Yeah, so I get think their foot in the door. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of these people too, they don't live in California as well. So they, it would be more of a... Uh, if I lived in Nebraska and somebody told me I could do whatever, uh, whatever Eric Austin needs to be involved with him, I would have moved out. I would have been home. I would have done whatever it took to be around that dude. How do you think mm-hmm. Eric would have felt if, some, if you moved all the way here from Nebraska just to help him? Depends if I made his life better. As long as you're happy, and I was it, happy, yeah. If you're what happy, if Eric me? met you and you didn't like you, and he just uh, sent you back to Nebraska? Then I took my shot. Okay. But think about it, dude. Like, <laughs> sleep for Steve. Hey, hey, what's the MJ quote? You miss 100 percent of the shots that's you don't true. shoot. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Maybe he said that. Maybe I just made him. No, up. No, no, know. it's true. But like, yeah. that's a skateboarder's mentality. We sleep on the couch. We sleep on the floor just to go skate. That's what I'm saying. As long as you're happy, that makes to go skate. I don't care what I have to do. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. we're already so comfortable being miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing that. I know. I know. Jerome. Can we have a couple interns sleep over at your house? 
Sure. <laughs> okay. I've, thought, the I, I've actually <laughs> the thought about room. I've actually thought about that before, it, because it's a little bit different than skating. But like we talk about money, right? Sure. And by far the biggest thing you see from people is that they just don't think it's possible, right? I'll never have this. I'll right. never be able to do that. Right. And and I, I haven't made up my mind on it yet. Jen doesn't doesn't like it, but. I want to see if like I could bring somebody around me for like, I don't know, three months, six months, like live it, see and see they... if you could change somebody's outlook. Oh, that would then, I think you could totally too. Good, yeah. For sure, I think you could too. So I told Jim, like, hey, what do you think? Like, we bring somebody if that person in. Is like totally into it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like bringing in a Outgoing foreign exchange student or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But she didn't feel totally comfortable with it at, at that time. But we have little babies. Yeah. Well, you're bringing so somebody in to maybe if they didn't live at your house. Yeah, they were, you know, you got them a little apartment. Yeah, but I got this like idea. Like, let's see, let's show them the whole thing, right? The whole like, thing, family life. Yeah, that's why you have kids. That's a show right there. I think it's a show. But like, dude, the thing about business, right? It's so easy to see somebody that succeeds business and sucks everything else mm -hmm. right like i, I kind of want to show somebody at all like right, right, right. yeah you're gonna be an entrepreneur you're gonna start a business and it's gonna be lonely and you're gonna have challenges with separation with the family and blah blah like this is what it's actually like sure. looks like and how to i think it'd be cool yeah you yeah, ever but, thought about writing a book yeah i think i'm getting pretty close yeah i think mean, being a being a skateboarder and then trans transitioning to what you're doing now i think that's a fucking yeah really dope story i want to do you know i do I mean? want to do it uh, the idea i have right now and maybe we'll use this as maybe people can leave comments and say i like this idea let's okay, tweak this okay but i almost want to make a book around finance but like through a skater's eyes mm -hmm. right yes. so like w we say things so different and one thing i found at least for the people that have followed me through kind of the whole process is like dude for whatever reason when you say it it's easy for me to understand right and you're speaking my language right yes so like i almost want to like try to see if i could take these like maybe complex scenarios mm -hmm. and break them down in full-blown skate talk yeah totally and yep. make it so that like a skater could leave not knowing anything about money and finish knowing all about personal finance, about stocks, bonds, alternatives, tax, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Broad and direct. Yeah. And I think that's great because when we, you, you know Andrew Huberman? He's a neuroscientist. Yes, yes. He, uh, yes. he grew up skating. Yep. He grew up skating at the EMB. He came on our show. He was breaking down stuff in kind of layman's terms and skate talk, yeah. you know? And it, it made it so comfortable to digest and understand because first of all, you, you trust him, yeah. right? He's right. a skater. That's right. It's the same ilk, right? right? And then it just made it a lot more consumable. Yeah. Where you um, walked away feeling like you learned something, oh right? Oh, my God. Sure. 100,000%. Yeah, 100, That's right. 100,000%. Right. And listen, I listen to people on other podcasts come. I've listened to Huberman on it. It's interesting. But when you're talking to yeah. them in your own language yeah. and you trust them, yeah. A fucking world of difference. I agree. Man. Yeah, I agree. Time. I mean, so that's what I was thinking. So you should. I, I took a little. Uh, I read, or you said something about rich dad, poor dad, uh -huh. and I was like, all right, I'm gonna start. Like, I'm gonna start listening to it. But immediately there was a bunch of terms that were like thrown out, and I was like, what the fuck? I don't even know what he's talking about. Yeah. And so someone like you to come in and kind of like, hey, this is what this all means. Yeah. As a skateboarder. We just lived in this little pigeonhole. We don't know what the hell freaking. I don't. I don't yeah. Say some crazy term. Yeah, maybe it's a rich dad, poor dad skate version. There you yeah, go. totally. It's, it's a yeah. gateway drug. Yeah. Right? But a lot of people that don't. I mean, it doesn't have to be a skateboarder to listen to something like no, that. No, but either. what I found is like, it, at least for me, right? Like, skaters for the most part, like, dude, we don't go to school. Like, we we so learn through experience, right? And I think there's a different way to communicate for that type of person versus the book smart person, totally. right? So knowing that, like, dude, we don't typically learn by sticking our face in a book. That takes a different type of delivery, and I needed that delivery when I learned, mm -hmm. right? Like one of the mm -hmm. blessings I had was, was, his name was Randy. He would come into my life, and he would start talking to me, and when I didn't understand what he was saying, I would always say, dude, I need you to explain that to me as a skater. Right. I need you to, I don't understand what you're saying. And so I just had somebody that would take the time and go, okay, this is what this means. And this is, the, the, you know, so it's like, I think there's value in that. Oh, right? Definitely. I and was, the, and you know, the thing just breaking things down for people. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the thing with like, you know, it's finance business, with finance more than anything, it's like people use terms to make themselves feel like, you know, this is our thing and the barrier to entry is, is you know, really, really high. And if you want access, you need us to do it for you, mm -hmm. right? It, that was a big complaint about like financial advisors for a long time. It's like, 
they would communicate so they'd make you feel like you would never understand. You need so them. then give me your money and I'll manage it, right? Now, it's not to say anything bad about financial advisors. There's some really good ones out there. But that was the frustration for a while, yeah. right? And now you're starting to see people go, no. Like, you're seeing like crowdfunding for information come together, right? Like the Wall Street bets guys, right? Like, dude, this is a bunch of people. Like, how does this work? I need to know. And then let's go do this. You're seeing that more and more. So I think there is this opportunity in this moment of like, let's actually figure out how to do it ourselves. Sure, like yeah. it's almost like the, you're seeing like a rise of like populist, it's like the populist rise in this moment, right? It's like mm -hmm. you're seeing all these people come together and figure it out for themselves and remove the gatekeeper. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you totally. know, totally. So, there you go. I don't know, yeah. maybe we're creating something. Give us, uh, honestly, if, if you can leave feedback on this one, I would love it if that's something that uh, any of the listeners would Person, I would hey, love if you did that, man. Like, yeah. To create something like well, that. Well, Kelly, leave yeah. it in the comments. Okay? I will. Because all the comments will help the algorithm yeah. get the episode out there. Definitely. Yeah, we more, have a YouTube more, channel, you know. so we say like, subscribe, love, you know. Yeah. yeah. Trinity, Save if you, for us. If you like put this subscribe. on TikTok, this, that, that section on TikTok, what would you hashtag it? You'd hashtag it to get people to, to get it out there. Yeah, to get <laughs> How would I get this out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, I would probably do a video talking about Oh man, probably I would do like an elite type of video. Like the elites run the show. They don't want this information getting out here. They're, you know, maybe like <laughs> highlight different like challenges that like people face, bear to entry. And then I'd probably hashtag like socialism and capitalism. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh wow, mm -hmm. okay. And then, suck them and in then right financial there. literacy <laughs> and then investing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you would get like, you know, this whole freaking energy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think which so. is great for you. Well, then it's just a bunch of people that are like watching it. And look, the thing about content, right? Like if you can, if you can trigger or capture emotion, that's what engages and creates viral videos, yes, right? Absolutely. So and those comments can help you create more content. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Yeah. Most of my best videos come from like somebody leaving a comment, and me going, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. You know? Sure, sure, sure. So, Thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be careful with that, too. Like, you go down a slippery slope with that one, too. And you're just like, like Rich Dad Poor Dad, like Kiyosaki. He, he's, I, I think he's awesome. His book did a lot for me. But like, he's definitely that dude that's like doomsday everything, mm. right? The market is crashing tomorrow. Sell everything. You're never, and you're like, dude, are you saying that just to make something viral? And I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, right. so you got to be, care be careful with it, you know? Right. But, Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Like for in skate community, right? Uh, if if TikTok existed, I would post a video of myself and I would put like, what was the big message boards? A slap. I'd oh, yeah. hashtag slap message boards. You know, I'd hashtag like, <laughs> what was it? I would hashtag all these people that I knew didn't like me. Right. right. And then hashtag groups that did. And then have oh, all that. Yeah, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. But I dude, I, I couldn't do that back then. That would have broke squid me. Game yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have broke me. Yeah. Totally. Totally. That's, nowadays, you could laugh at it. It's job. It's, it's funny. You, once you get older, you stop yeah. caring so much. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Man, Mikey Taylor. Hey. Come hey. back anytime. And Dang, come I appreciate. Look, I love and chat every time us. I do this. I love this, bro. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. fun. Good times, bro. Yeah. Do you enjoy watching the skate clips? A little reminisce. I do. Yeah. This is my favorite one though. On your corner. Oh. That's my favorite one. Lance Mountain drew that. Did he? Yeah, he made, Lance Mountain made me a flip book oh, of my Switch good. Flip Manny. We scanned it in. That's good. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, the, the highlight for me, and this is not to, I love every single one of you equally, but seeing the DVS clips and then being next to Jerron, yes. Ooh, that yeah. one brought back a lot of memories That's just right. from trips yeah. that we went on. Right. Oh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right that, was awesome. yeah. that was awesome. That was awesome. That was Skate More was a great video, man. Yeah, it was. Skate More, that was one of my favorite times. All the trips we used to go on, it was so just fun, so man. fun. And he's the reason I got on DVS. We oh, didn't yeah. say that, but he's the reason. Okay. I called him and said, I, I S to, um, now I'm going on a tangent. No, S, no, S told me I was never going to get a shoe. Oh. And I was like, oh, this is over. And Jerron asked me a couple years prior when I was a kid when they're flowing Paul. He's like, hey, dude, I, I, think there, I think there's an opportunity for you on DBS. Okay. And I chose S. And I remember like, shit, I'm going to call Jerron and go, dude, is there still an opportunity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that door is always open. And I called him. He was like, dude, let me call Gav. And then seriously, Gav's on the phone with me the next day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. The times. Look at Jerron. Huh? Yeah. Look at Putting things together. Yeah. I, I try. Man. I try. That's so uh, Jerron's sick. found a lot of talent out there. Oh, yeah. Jeremy one of my Rogers. one of my favorite talents I've found is Jeremy Rogers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so sick. That's right. I love that. But guy. even Jeremy, man, like 
even the trips that were so crazy were so fun. Fuck yeah. They were so fun. Super fun. Oh. Dude, never a dull moment ever. No, the Oz trip, the Spain trip, when you walk around with a butter knife. Oh <laughs> Remember my God. that? Yeah, oh. like we were leaving a, a, a club late night and he had a butter knife and someone pulled out a real knife on that dude and or a gun and he fucking <laughs> took off. Who, Jeremy? Yeah, because yeah. he tried to pull out a butter yeah. knife on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. A butter knife. A butter yeah. knife. A butter knife. Yeah, he's so silly. Okay. Yeah. And, and anyway. that dude did not have that. And he yeah. took out a gun and said, Jeremy was like, yeah. 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 Random. Yeah, wow. Some good times. Wow. That was some good times. More stories to come. Yeah. More stories to come. <laughs> We'll save it for another episode. That's right. Oh, we'll bring out the juicy stuff next time. Do you I hit think. them with a like, follow, and all that? Uh, sometimes. Depends on more of on our experience show, uh. you know? But, uh, you know, talking about this with you, it's like, yeah, all that stuff matters. It doesn't yep. matter if... Most of, you know, we get a couple... We get a, a bunch of likes. The dislikes matter, too. It all matters. What's your ratio, do you think? Is it an average it's ratio? It's 99% likes. Poo, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You know what's funny, though, is when you have a guest on here that doesn't live in this world... They're in, you, if you were to go, oh yeah, like and subscribe, they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. someone like you, you understand. But yeah. it's also like yeah. the YouTube, that it's ingrained in our in our brains too. Yeah. The YouTube. We started yeah. doing it as a company every time. And I was on, I didn't like doing it at the beginning. Yeah. And do, you see the difference. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. We, on our highlights channel, we do Good. something. We have a little thing at the end. Good. But, uh, but yeah, like and subscribe. Comment to Mikey Taylor. Leave yeah. a lot of comments. Here we yeah. go. Let's 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 test this, this theory. Start, out. This is where it starts. Yeah. Let's test this out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Just say hi out. in the comments. <laughs> Just say hi, hello, or Just no, or yes. Spell out Mikey Taylor. Word Here you go. Letter by letter. First person to do it wins. Yeah. yeah. Here you go, right. man. That's Mikey right. Taylor, everybody. Huh? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay.